and listen to 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge in high definition. Simply tune to 98.1 and select HD2. 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. morning everybody it is 7 a.m on thursday april 20th today in baton rouge expect cloudy skies with a high of 86 coming up on otb we have a bunch of guests lsu softball coach bet Tarina joins the show at 8 a.m at 8 30 we talk college football with ben hartsock of sirius xm also lsu baseball coach jay johnson joins us at 9 a.m and we have a new edition of munchies with chef michael johnson at 9 15 you can follow today's show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at OTB underscore ESPN or catch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel and subscribe for daily content. Hour number one of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studio, starts now. Where do we go? All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome in. It is April 20th, 2023. And this is Off the Bench, T-Bob, Jake, Mario, and Taylor with you today. And uh, let's just get, you know, elephant out of the room, you know, 420. <laughs> I get it. Um, I know I'm getting old because, I mean, you know, it's just. I, Gosh, I, I, am I getting so old that I didn't even correlate yeah, that when I, you said I, it? I mean, I feel like every year I've done radio, I've been like, let's do like the biggest, like, you know, stoner athletes or something like that. And I just. He sat down last night and this morning. I was like, I don't, I don't think I want to do it. Mm. I don't, I don't, there I don't, is I a great don't, Ricky Williams like commercial slash letter to Roger Goodell. Yeah. I think I sent it in the group. If I didn't, I think you would appreciate that. That sounds like great hour. Look, hour three. I'm down. Yeah. That sounds like great hour three. Five. If we have time, but I don't know. We got we got a lot. That's true. We got a lot. We got a lot today in a good way. In a very very good way. Yeah, we got our guy Ben Hartsock coming on. Uh, talk a little draft. Uh, talk about some tight ends as the Saints are looking to maybe target one. We got. Jay Johnson coming off an hour three at 9 a.m. to talk LSU baseball as they prepare to travel to Oxford to take on a very bad Ole Miss team. Um, I love the quote that I saw from Cade Beloso where he basically said, look, we know we're not playing that well lately. Like, even beating Kentucky, which shows you that this is a team that uh, holds themselves to the same standard that we do, which I really like, right? They're, they're not out here like, why are we getting critiqued? Like, we're still winning all these series. Like, which, which you know, like... Still number one. Yeah. It's it's viable to be defensive because, yeah, like like we said yesterday, we are critiquing through the lens of championship expectations. And, well, it appears that that's how Beloso and the other leaders of this team are operating as well. So, we'll talk to Jay Johnson coming up at 9 a.m. We got Coach Tarina at 8 a.m. in studio. Remember the teal walk going down this weekend at Tiger Park. And um, uh, who am I missing? Uh, Chef. Chef. Oh, Chef Michael Johnson. Munchies. It's Thursday. Oh, steady Eddie. Now, that's kind of funny. That Munchies is. falling on 420 yeah. is, uh, that's perfect. That's where right we can there. maybe, you know, yeah. have some of our we questions. Lean into it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, happy 420 and everything. It, it kind of, you know, in, 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 a, in a legal marijuana age, it loses a little bit of its edge. Yeah. Right? It, it, yeah. Was, it, was, it was, you know, it was a little different, like, maybe back in the day. Back in my day, when you were sneaking around and you're at the train tracks or by the river and whatnot, and now you're just like showing up in stores and, and like, uh, yeah, give me in that. a van okay, cool. by the river. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's how it used to be. Okay, I used to feel uncomfortable. Like maybe I was gonna get mugged and or arrested. What happened to that? Okay, give me, give me. Some was of that. it like a flashing sign? Like just you know, to live. Just like you put your fingers together and just like flash it real quick or? No, it's not like I was actually talking about. Well, ooh, this is not actually. You know what? I'm going to, um, for once, uh, use discretion here. And the conversation I was about to get into was not. Is it uh, all fair fodder? 
It's 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 hour three fodder as okay, it had okay. to do with the secret communication system in the Hodges. I think I, it was maybe the Hodges Hall bathroom am, at LSU back in the day. Highly intrigued by this. Actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, well, look, look, we got a lot to get to today. Uh, yeah, you wrote I, you I know, actually, Ole Miss is this right here on the. Yeah, I wrote LSU versus Ole Miss, thinking that's where it starts. That Ole Miss is S H I T, which really does sum it up. I mean, they're three and twelve in the SEC. They can't pitch. The bats are going to dominate them. Uh, but but I, I think we'll probably save some more of that for tomorrow. We'll cover that a lot with Jay today. Uh, I feel like it's kind of a sneaky big college football news day. Yep. ESPN dropped their FPI top 25. And uh, on three does a very good job on social media with graphics. And I think it's impossible to uh, to to see this graphic here. And if, if you go to on three, Taylor, or I have it in the document, either one, um, you 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 can see it. It's it's impossible if you're a college football fan not to get a little stirring in your loins and be like, why is this team ranked here? Why is this team ranked here? So we'll get into that. And then we'll look, we'll talk a little draft as you should be terrified if you are one of these teams drafting a top quarterback, uh, because they just don't work out. It's just bottom line, they just do not work out. In fact, the numbers are pretty shocking. There's a bunch of transfer portal news. We got NBA playoffs. I mean. Dylan Brooks is out here with some quotes against LeBron after the Grizz pull yes. even last night. I mean, yes, very was. funny. Uh, just straight up calling that man old. I mean, straight up calling that man old. And what I love is LeBron still scored like 28, shot over 50% from the field. I think with Brooks as the primary defender, he's like 7 of 14 or something. But Brooks had the game was like, he ain't dropped 40 on me. I mean, <laughs> which, which I love. Yeah. As if like 28 isn't a great game. Like, I, I, I would do the same thing. Like, he ain't rushed for 200 on me. Yeah, uh, sir, he, he had a five yard average for 150. He ain't 200. I don't know what to tell you, bro. Uh, I was so, just, credit Dylan Brooks. <laughs> oh, no, I was sitting there. I was thinking, like, what would be the equivalent? That's, that's a really good one, T, is the rushing total. It's like, you know, you're going to get the top. Mike linebacker, me playing fullback. He had nine and a half tackles. He had ten though. Yeah, exactly. He, he didn't have ten. ten. Yeah, he might have had a couple sacks, but he didn't have ten tackles. Yeah. Six solos, two sacks, but he didn't have ten. Um, same guy that called uh, Shannon Sharp Hall of Fame or a blog boy when they got into yeah, it with him. Yeah, which you know what, man? <laughs> uh, again, I like trolling and I like trash talk, and so although, uh, look. Dylan Brooks is the one who's going to have to deal with any potential repercussions, right? Yes. Like, he's the one who's going to have to deal. We're going to find out just how old LeBron really is uh, because he is poking the proverbial bear. Uh, also, I thought, I, thought, I thought Milwaukee was pretty impressive. I mean, no Giannis, no problem. Uh, what did they say? I think it was a franchise record for playoff threes last night. Uh, they had, like, six players score over 15, just everybody. Yeah. Getting it done. So we'll probably touch some NBA playoffs in a bit as well. But let's start with FPI, not FB, FPI, the Football Power Index. Um, ESPN Seth Walder wants to offer you a quick reminder mm -hmm. on how FPI works, right? Because these are not rankings in how we think of rankings. And they actually, this is a system, Jake, that doesn't really take wins and losses into account. Here's how it works. The Football Power Index is our season-long ratings and projection system. In the preseason, it relies on past performance on offense and defense, returning and transfer production, and past recruiting data for players on the roster to form a rating. We then use those ratings to simulate the season 20,000 times to then formulate the projections. Uh, so off the bat here... Um, understand this is something that is influenced heavily by recruiting, whether you like that or not, right? Like mm -hmm. stuff like blue chip ratio is really going to matter in these rankings. And, uh, again, wins and losses do not, for instance, Texas, Oof. after going eight and five last year at the end of the year, not even getting into these rankings, Jake, as we'll see, but after going eight and five last year was seventh or eighth in the FPI at the end of the year, mm -hmm. because Steve Sarkeesian woefully underperformed like took what should have been a great team according to the data and absolutely sucked but I, i'll just say this regardless of how you feel about it the point of this is not to be 100 percent correct but it is pretty interesting to see what an equation this complicated spits out because there there, there are some odd wrinkles here uh jake what immediately jumps out to you and, and taylor if we yeah. get that top 25 there what immediately 
jumps out to you from this top 25? I mean, it is hard to go past five. It's hard to go past Texas. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people hate Texas because of preseason rankings. Like, I truly feel like they have their feeling toward Texas because of it. And there they are again. And, you know, now you got the Arch Manning where every single play of him in the spring game is broken down. So I think people just get really, really tired of that. And that's nothing Texas can do. Yeah. But that's just like it's A&M kind of falls into that category, too. And if you're even outside of the SEC, I'm sure you see A&M anywhere, anywhere on this list. You're probably like, come on, man. Are you kidding me yet again? So yeah. those two things jump out to me. Also, Oklahoma at 11. I thought that was a bit high as Oklahoma well. Oklahoma was bad last year awful like, six and seven not like te like texas was disappointing but still six and three in a really good big 12 uh they lost to a really good washington team they were overmatched in that bowl game but still disappointing but they didn't fall off a cliff oklahoma was three and six in big 12 play yeah that no okay you raise a good point both vastly underachieved relative to talent but oklahoma even Achieve, underachieved even more so than Texas did. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I completely agree with that. And both of these teams, massive years. Yes. And I've talked about this a lot. Do you really want to be limping in to a new conference? And, oh, yeah, that new conference is the best in college football. I mean, for Oklahoma especially, like Texas, you know, Texas kind of used to sucking at this point. <laughs> like, they, they, they convince themselves they're going to be good every year, but there's just something yeah. in the ecosystem they're not. Uh, but, no, like Oklahoma fan, I'd be terrified. If this year doesn't go well, you're coming in with Brent Venables, a completely unproven coach that has taken what is like, th this is what I want. Maybe their geography protects them here, but is Oklahoma at risk of being the next Nebraska, a, a program that's kind of in the middle of nowhere, but has been a f accepted football powerhouse for a hundred years. It can, it can go fast and it can be hard to get back. I mean, again, look at Nebraska. If we went back in a time machine and tried to tell someone in the late nineties, how we talk about Nebraska nowadays, they oh. would laugh at us. They would be like, no, no, it's a, that, that's impossible. That's impossible. They, 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 Nebraska is still, even after a decade or even more, like you know, 20 years of not being that good, um, they're still a top 10 winning program in, in, yeah. in college football history. Yeah, they felt too big to fail. Yes, yes, exactly, right? And they did. And people say, oh, and now people are like, they'll never get good. Like, ah, oh, you can't recruit the league and you can't do that. Now, we all know that's wrong. If you're a member of the Corn Hub, go Matt Rule. Okay, we're here for it. I've got some Matt Rule sound we'll play later in the show yes. that we'll both love. It's about time. Yeah. It's about damn time. Yeah. I might, because of this sound, Are you I, might, the Corn I Hub? might be with you. Let's go, dude. Solely based off this one clip that we'll play later. I'm T Cobb. Now we just need uh, chat to come up with a good corn pun for Jake Hester. Uh, just get There's something there. Chuck and Jake, something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. work on it. We'll work on it. Whatever. Um, so yeah, look, Texas at five jumps yes. on the screen. Look, I don't care that they're ranked that high. I only want everybody to remember this. So when Steve Sarkeesian fails, none of y'all make any more excuses for him. Okay. That's he fair. took over a seven and three Texas team that is more talented than everybody else in the conference. And what has he done with it? Seven and six, eight and five. He's done nothing with it is the point. Okay. So when Texas fails to live up to this billing, just remember the the computers are telling you that Texas should be top ten. Don't even get married to top five. Should be top ten, and yet they will not. Hey, let's um, put the uh, another surprise that jumped out. And you're right. If Texas does that, I will be with you, and I will jump off the Sarkeesian. Uh, it's not bandwagon because I'm not like that high on him, but a lot I of understand. People, like, I do a lot of understand great football what you're minds respect him. Like a lot of people yes. know more about football than I do. Respect him, you, many others, but we'll see. So, okay, yeah, th those things. But also, the three teams ahead of LSU, because LSU comes in at number four on this list. So if you're yeah. listening to this show, you're probably an LSU fan. You feel really good about it. And also, the three teams ahead of you right now, new quarterback, new quarterback, new quarterback. Yeah. And you've got Jaden Daniels returning. Right, wrong, or indifferent. If you love him or if you hate him. His head coach came on this show yesterday and said if he does not, you know, A, B, and C, he could be the best quarterback in the country. Yeah. And you have him coming back. Even the teams around you, like Quinn Ewers, you know, I don't know that you feel great about him like you do Jaden Daniels coming back. And so you being fourth on this list, having a guy that you feel really good about coming back, and even those three giants that are in front of you, they're still breaking in a new quarterback. We don't know how those new quarterbacks are going to come in. We think that they're going to work out. We think that Beck's going to work out. You know, maybe it's Ty Simpson in Alabama. We think that they can come in and play at a high level, but we don't know that. We know 
what Jaden Daniels can do. Yeah, I and and I guess I mean I kind of buried. You're right. I, I buried the lead here, which being a local LSU show, uh, we should point out that yeah, LSU the computers really like them, firmly in the top five here at number four. Now, in terms of rating, and it, it, it's just like this on the recruiting trail, right? Uh, there is a clear tier one, and that's the big three which is Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia. Uh, if you look at the actual ratings, I don't know that I have the, no, I don't have the actual ratings written down, but I want to say there's like a five-point jump between Georgia and LSU. Uh, but yeah. still, for a program that just a couple of years ago was completely rebuilding to now be viewed as the best team in the country outside of that big three, that's a huge accomplishment, right? And that should get you excited for this football season. Uh, look, let's go to go to break. We still got a lot of, Stuff to break down here uh, when it comes to this top 25. Um, I mean, like uh, Ole Miss being right behind Utah is is kind of crazy. Florida continuing to get love. I wish my Huskies be a little higher. Uh, we'll break it uh, all down. And then again, we still have uh, the quarterback conversation coming as well. So, look, you want to hang out this morning? It'll be a very fun show. 7 to 10 a.m. Go on YouTube.com slash 104.5 ESPN. Come hang out in the chat. And uh, more OTB coming up next. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Go to Donaldson Glass and Body, dgbauto.com. dgbauto.com is a great uh, resource to start your, oh wait, what did I say? Okay, well, I almost said your car purchasing journey. I went on autopilot there. Uh, no, look, man, if you need your car taken care of, Donald's you don't have to buy a new car place. because like yes. they're going to make sure yes. that you stay on the roads. What yes. you're saying, you're finally not paying a car note. Mm -hmm. Also, you're no longer under warranty at that point. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to the dealership. And if you need to extend the life of your vehicle, DGM can make sure you hold off and paying that car note as long as possible. And then any look collision repair, anything best body shop in the state. I'll put that on anything. 24 seven emergency tone Donald's glass spot. DGBauto.com is the website. Look, they've done it for T. They've done it for me. They have kept our cars on the road, right? No matter what's been wrong with them, they've been able to fix it. They fix it the first time, and they don't surprise you with a huge bill at the end. That's just not who they are. So I've been doing it since 1977, dgbauto.com. Our listeners fire off their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside off the bench anytime on Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. Each year, Guarantee Media hosts a radiothon to benefit Dreams Come True, the local organization that grants dreams to Louisiana kids suffering life-threatening illnesses and their families. We've interviewed these incredible kids and their stories warm our hearts. And none of it would be possible without your help. So we're asking for your support in our effort to making more dreams come true. Each year, our Dreams Come True radiothon is powered by the Baton Rouge Clinic. Visit GuaranteeMedia.com to pledge your support today and thank you. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly 
is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walker. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a... Hey, go join us for the Thursday edition of Hanny Time. Mike Scarborough from TigerBait.com is talking LSU spring game. And Chris Rosvoglu from Boot Crew Media is talking Saints draft. Hanny Time, noon weekdays, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Esther and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back. OTB rolling right along this morning. Uh, I'm very excited to hear this Matt Rule sound, um, Jake, but uh, it looks like chat, as they always do, came through once again. Uh, I am T-Cobb, and you are Jake, Hes- Jake Husker. Jake Husker. Now, Husky like Jake's it. great, too, but Jake Husker yeah. is just... Yeah, now you say it... It's so perfect. It does make sense. With T. Cobb and Husker. To, I'm trying to get... <laughs> That's our new Nebraska... It's a Baton Rouge-based Nebraska football podcast. I'm about to get this. And it's called Corn Hub... Corn... Corn Hub <laughs> with T. Cobb and Husker. Yeah, okay. hell yeah, dude. All right, all right. All right. I think I sent it. Hopefully. How, how does our show actually uh, go? I just sent the article. How, how does our show actually go? Does it go... Hester and T-Bob. So would it be Husker and T-Cobb, right? Yeah. Is that what it says? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. We're working it all out on this morning. Um, <clears throat> uh, look, hit the like buttons, you bums. Okay. If I, you're I, watching in the chat, you got yes. you got to please the algorithmic gods of Royal Life. So get them likes up. All right. I'm trying to find the sound, but if I don't, if it's deep in the interwebs and I can't find it, so Matt Rule and Nebraska are very serious about the revival of the fullback. Oh, how wow. serious? <laughs> how about a one day football camp just for the position that has almost become extinct? Wait, one so... day football camp. It's fullbacks only. Matt Rule's having it because he wants to find fullbacks to make Nebraska fullback you again. They're they're inviting. Is this like a Vince Papali invincible situation where it's like an open fullback tryout or this is like they're getting all the elite fullback prospects to a specific fullback camp? I think it's like a come one, come all situation. Okay, so like you yeah. can make the team immediately. Yeah. So you could get your next Vince Papali here, but for fullback. Uh, okay, look, I I don't, if, if you want to be serious about it, I don't hate it from a strategy standpoint because you have seen Michigan at a time when everybody else is going finesse, you have seen Michigan gain a lot of ground by being like, no, we're going to go off meta, we're going to go old school, we're going to try to affect toughness. If, if you're thinking about what Nebraska can recruit, um, it would probably, you know, kind of naturally lean you there because you, you're going to get big corn-fed O-linemen. Uh, so a more, and big corn-fed fullbacks. So a, a kind of more tough uh, style could potentially benefit them. I do think that's hard. Sometimes it's harder to win with scheme, though, when you're trying to win with, like, strength and toughness. Like, yeah. I can be pretty recruiting-based. Look, I, I'm so caught up in this right now, and, and you made a lot of <laughs> good points up, there. But up. he said, so we're doing a fullback camp this summer. We're doing a one-day only fullback camp. My thought process was there's probably guys out there that play tight end. There's probably guys out there that are big tailbacks. There's probably guys in the wing T that are fullbacks in other places across the country. Linebackers, they can come here for one day and just focus on one position. 
play fullback. Hell yes, dude. Okay. Nice. Okay, Matt I'm so glad to have you on the squad. I'm back. I'm currently choosing a team from all five conferences to root for this year. Uh, obviously, I'll shoot. Um, Nebraska in the Big Ten and Washington in the Pac-12. I have not thrown my lot in in the Big 12 or nice. uh, the ACC yet, but I will eventually. Um, okay, we, we talked about the uh, college football FPI top 25. Let's go back to it real quick. Uh, Jake, how about Georgia at three? Uh, yeah. Kirby Smart licking his chops oh, God. seeing this right now, dude. They think we're going to win seven games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Number three. Schedule. And Even everybody's going to believe history. him because they believed it last year. Uh, yeah, that's a surprise. Uh, I mean, could you flip-flop these three teams back and forth? You could. Georgia probably deserves the respect. Uh, but, again, this is not This is numbers. This yeah, isn't something that you have a human element to it. So, I guess it's not that crazy. They did lose a lot, even though they've recruited at a very high level. But you know what might put them at three? Maybe because they don't do a deep dive into the portal. Still, like more than last year, because last year they yeah, did no dive. Yeah, yeah. but may, I mean, maybe returning I, I, production so dropped them to three. I cannot. I tried to math it out yesterday. I cannot exactly figure out where the equation is going to awry here, um, because it would feel like Alabama has a lot of the same problems Georgia does, and Georgia feels better right now. But the computers are, and and, and really, actually, they're roughly equivocal, right? They give Alabama a twenty percent chance of winning the Natty. They give Georgia a nineteen percent chance. Uh, they. Give Texas a 6% chance, which is right after Georgia. And then LSU has a 4% chance, a fifth on that list as well. Um, the computers... Texas has to go to Tuscaloosa this year, by the way. Just oof. a reminder. Oof. Oof. Uh, the computers contain. That would be huge if they won that, though. Like, yeah. that would, Sark would probably get like a $50 million <laughs> extension. Um, the computers continue to disrespect Michigan over Ohio State. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously Michigan winners of the Big Ten two years in a row, beating Ohio State badly two years in a row, and still sit here at six. Um, you know who it kind of feels like, though? It's the same situation of Utah and USC. Yeah, man, Utah being at 15, surrounded by, I mean, followed right by Ole Miss is like, God, I'd be, yeah. I'd be kind of salty if yeah. I was a Ute fan. So, so kind of on the same level now, I mean, one in six, I guess, is different than seven and 15. But Utah's just like, man, we're back-to-back Pac-12 champs. Yep, that's that a good point. team that you always, always put in front of us. You know what they can't do with us? Keep up with us physically. Nope. Can't do it. Soft boys. And, I mean, you, but it feels like Utah's like, ah, we're good. We'll prove everybody wrong again. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, again, again, you know, these are, these are just computers, um, not humans here. I can see the computers hating on Utah, too. Computers, well, because a lot of this is so recruiting ranking yes, based. Exactly. Uh, which is, again, like Florida State, the computer's not as high as us humans are yeah. on them. Um, so, Mike Norvell, like, like, basically, I do think this is actually a pretty good metric for at the end of the year judging did a coach overachieve or underachieve. Like, if Mike Norvell actually gets Florida State to finish in the top 10, on top of just deserving credit for bringing that program back to where it was used to being for such a long time. Um, you should give him, you should put your thumb on the scale for him, give him a little extra credit because he is viewed as not having as much talent here, right? Uh, if USC ends up outside of the top 10 and behind Utah, Lincoln Riley should catch warranted criticism. Um, and, and so, look, it's, it's, it's fun. Um, one other, the, the last kind of note that I have on this is uh, the amount of teams each conference got in. The SEC got seven teams in. Um, and then it's actually the Big 12 and the Pac-12. Coming in with yeah. five teams apiece, Big Ten only gets four, and the ACC only gets three. So the Big Ten, very, very top-heavy. Um, and you love, uh, it, it kind of sucks for the Pac-12. It's almost like a, you know, they're, they're burning bright as their star looks like it's going to die out. But right here, before everything changes, the Pac-12 actually seems relevant in football again. I think the Pac-12 is really relevant. And I don't know if they're going to cannibalize their selves it feels like a year where that's probably going to happen. Yeah. Really good teams have two, three losses. And if this is a 12-team playoff year, they'd be okay. But because it's still not going to be, they might miss out on the playoff yet again. I mean, at USC, you have Caleb Williams. We all know who he is, Raisman, uh, reigning Heisman Trophy winner. You have Bo Nix, who I, I understand. Look, PTSD, you're like, wait, Bo Nix? It's like, beach. yeah, look what he did last year. I mean, in that offense, he was thriving. Cam Rising's back for his 73rd 
season. Uh, we've talked about Penix. I mean, 21 for Washington seems really, really low yeah. on this list. I mean, Oregon State's got DJU now. I mean, it's a real quarterback league. UCLA, they went and got a top transfer from the MAC and also brought in a five-star quarterback. Yeah, that's right. This is a league that's going to have really good, almost elite quarterback play if they do what they did a year ago. Yeah, uh, and, you know, it's going to be one of really old school about it. West, West yeah. Coast has always been Fair. known. Yeah. For great quarterback I mean, who knows, like, play, and looks um, like it's back. Rashada at Arizona State. Can he, as a freshman, after all the hoopla and the NIL stuff with Florida and Miami, huh. you know, can oh, he man. live up to what teams were willing let's just to let, pay for let's him? Let's just let Jay Rashada live for a little <laughs> bit. I mean, that kid got caught in the eye of a storm that was not really of his making. Uh, there were a lot of bad business decisions made all around him that ended up reflecting very poorly on Ooh, AD just got stuffed to the rim. Huh. Um, all right. Uh, look, let's do this. Speaking of quarterback, let's, you know, draft next week. All the talk is about which quarterbacks need to be drafted, where they need to be drafted. And we got some numbers for you that are going to show you simply how terrifying it actually is to be one of these teams picking at the top of the draft and just how wrong this can all go. Uh, keep it locked here. No TV. We'll get into it next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Go to allstartoyotabatonrouge.com, allstartoyotabatonrouge.com. Uh, like I'm always telling you, man, uh, you want to join me in the all-star family. You want to join me in the in the minivan gang, baby, the MVG. You know, Harley people throw up the deuces to each other when they ride by. We throw up the M, okay? And uh, that could be you. You just got to get a Toyota Sienna, okay? Man up. If you, hey, Look, you can put truck nuts on a Toyota Sienna. No one said you can't. You don't have to get a Tundra or a Tacoma to do that. So make your dreams come true get the vehicle that has the most room get a minivan from all-star Toyota batteries i mean technically you can you know you can put them on the highlander the forerunner the corolla no. i mean no you can, i'm sure all-star right. only wants me trying to sell their minivans i, I mean you can put them on whatever you want uh no. t-bob's got the sienna i'm currently in the highlander i mean so many different options i've certainly had the forerunner before whatever you need, like it's going to be answered nope, over at all. Stop driving route back up. Many vans only. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with Front to Back Boat Service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends, that's there for you at Front to Back Boat Service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to Back Boat Service. For over a century, local broadcasting has evolved with the needs of the community. We move past the stigmas of opinion journalism and bring the most relevant news online, on air, and on the go. You have trusted us with your news, sports, weather, and entertainment. Trust us to keep moving with you. Text TV to 52886 and tell Congress local broadcasting is here to stay. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Clash of the Cooks Jambalaya Showdown is back. Join us on Saturday, April 22nd at the Ostner Medical Complex at The Grove. We've got cooking teams of pros and joes serving up their best jambalaya and Cajun Creole dishes, all while helping raise dough 
for local families battling cancer. Bring the whole family for great food, live tunes, and good times. Clash of the Cooks, Jambalaya Showdown, presented by Ashna, Saturday, April 22nd at lunchtime. Help us paddle it forward. For tickets and more information, go to clashofthecooks.com. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units. Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 75. Join me for Thursday's Hunt Palmer Show. Joe Healy from D1 Baseball's SEC Extra Team talking Southeastern Conference, and we'll turn our attention to the LSU football spring game. Hunt Palmer Show, one to three weekdays, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Esther and T Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Oh, nice. Uh, all right, welcome back to OTB. Man, um, shout out to uh, Mandalorian wrapping up season three yesterday. I thought it was a fantastic finale. Not getting any spoilers here, but um, I know, I know, I, I am not super caught up in all the Star Wars celebration news. I know there's, you know, Dave Filoni getting a, a, a Star Wars movie to bridge the gap between kind of where we're at now, Amanda, and the start of the sequels, and all this stuff. So, like, I know there's more stories to tell, but I would actually, um, I'm so satisfied with yesterday's ending, I don't know that I ever need to see another actual season of The Mandalorian. Now, you know, it makes okay. money, so they probably will. Yeah. But uh, it would be a very satisfying conclusion if that was the last right. of the actual Mandalorian TV show. And that's a good tale of a really good series. Like, if Game of Thrones would have had a banger of a last season, yeah. it did uh, not, obviously, uh, then I would have felt fulfilled. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, I feel like I don't need more. But now, because it was so bad, I needed House of the Dragon. Yes. And, God, I was thinking about House of the Dragon yesterday because uh, there was a, 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 a gif making the rounds on Twitter of the giant dragon, Vagar and the rain when it's outside the castle, and it looks like it's the size of a mountain. And I was like, man. House of Dragon was tight. I'm glad that they learned, hey, we don't have to spend all the monies on what these dragons look like. Let's just have more dragons. Yeah. Because yeah. that's going to play. That is that is also a good point. Like, so much of the original Thrones was um, speaking of, you know, speaking about them, never yeah. seen them until years and years, years of investment. Uh, House Dragon is in a time period where, yes, they're everywhere. Um, relatively. Uh, relative to I, what I just, we got later. I just forgot about the last episode yeah no no yeah i don't want to spoil anything but yeah Yeah, i agree i mean also strong ass ending to season one yeah it's been like six months like go watch um yeah that's true what's that what's the limitation there t i is there one or is she did you i mean i feel like there is there six months there okay here's my deal i i think that there is a spoiler statute of limitations where if you're gonna get mad at me i feel like the general voting public will be on my side right yeah and it probably is like six months. Like, yeah. we're probably fine now. But Whole question of the day, Mario. Yeah, what, what is the statute of limitations on spoilers? But, oh. like, erring on the side of caution, I'm like, ah, whatever. If you want to go watch, watch for yourself. Um, that's why we, we I, I need some sort of nerd podcast where I can talk about all of this. Yeah. Um, what, what should the answers be? Should it be a week, a month, three months, six months? Yeah, yeah. Or, okay. or, 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 well, actually, one of the options probably needs yeah, to be never. needs to be never, yeah. Yeah, one of the options mm-hmm. needs to be never. Um, so do... One month, three months, six months, never? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's perfect. Right. Uh, put that in the poll. Citizens Bank and Trust poll question of the day. All right, let's talk drafting a quarterback. Because, uh, Jake, you linked a graphic in here, and it's something that we could have touched on with Flestering yesterday, but we didn't get to it. Um if you look, I, I'm going to read, this is what Jake Link. I'm going to read the first quarterback taken over the last 10 years in each draft, and you can draw conclusions from it. Yeah. <clears throat> E.J. Manuel, 
Blake Bortles, Jameis Winston, Jared Goff, Mitchell Trubisky, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, yeah. <laughs> Joe Burrow, okay. Trevor Lawrence, okay. Kenny Pickett. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, okay, so out of those 10, you have one that is unquestioned great in Joe Burrow. Um, you have another in Trevor Lawrence who is on that path, right? Like, obviously, Urban Meyer stunted his growth for a year, but you saw what he did with Doug yeah. Peterson last year. He was great in that playoff comeback. Like, Trevor Lawrence is not on Burrow's ever, but nobody no. is, right? But, but like, I'm, you know, he's, 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 we're giving him a full pass. Like, good, great, great pick there. Uh, outside of that, oof. I mean, golf is solid. Like at least he's you found his golf way his back. Starter, yeah, a starter. he's been to the Super Bowl. Yes, but still, like where you drafted him and what you gave up to draft him, you were expecting more. And he's on a new franchise. Yeah. Well, and and, and again, and again, let's let's approach these ten guys yeah. just like what it what did they end up doing? And for golf, he's at least a viable NFL starter. He's not Burrow. He's not Trevor Lawrence. But he's a viable NFL starter. Uh, Kyler Kyler Murray's a bit weird because. I think viable starter, maybe even a bit above viable starter, yeah. but I don't know because he's trending in such a bad direction. Big year for him, obviously. New coach. Yeah. You're not going to have a ton of excuses. You got paid to be a top-tier quarterback. And some of the stories, when you hear some of his teammates talk about what he didn't do, yeah, that's that's a just flashing red siren alarm making hurricane noises. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and you know, it's all tied into the context of the, of the homework clause. Uh, so, I mean, that is so fascinating. Which, which, uh, oof, uh, oh, man, quarterbacks have a lot of leverage in contract negotiations. So, so I mean, look, out of this, though, you're, you're talking about two guys yeah. that you're unquestioningly One happy true with. elite star. Yes, and only one 10. elite star. And um, then maybe another, one, like, you're, it, it's like a 60 to 70% complete miss rate. Uh, and so, you know, you're sitting here, you're Carolina, you're Houston, um, you're Indy. It all feels very good right now, but quite frank, frankly, the reality is that it's probably not going to go well. Uh, and, and let's expand this. If you look at the 12 quarterbacks taken in the top 10 over the last five drafts, um, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert are the only ones that have ranked top 12 in QBR. They've been, they've been great. Yeah. Um, Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence look pretty good, but the other names in that list, Josh Rosen, Zach Wilson, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Trey Lance, Kyler Murray, Justin Fields, maybe we'll see. But the point is, you're hitting at less than 50%, and yet you have teams giving up so much resource to get in there. You have teams tanking to try to get in there. It is wild how inexact the science is of finding a great quarterback. 2018 NFL draft, because um, some of those names that you laid out to you, that draft and this draft, I, I think can can mirror each other unless some of these quarterbacks maybe surprise. That draft had Baker Mayfield go number one overall, now on his third team. It had Sam Donald go third overall, now on, if I'm not mistaken, third team. Yeah. Jets, Panthers, Niners. Yep. Um, now it had Josh Allen going seven. So there was your. This guy's so athletic, he's going to crush the combine. Let's take a chance on him. That worked out for them. There's two yes. guys in this draft that kind of fit that same mold, and teams are going to take a chance on them. And then Josh Rosen, he came in at number 10 on mm. this list. Kind of the same thing. Guy's got the arm. He can make all the throws. He's on practice squads now. Like, he's been on six practice squads. Yeah. Right, as a top 10 pick. And a lot of people were surprised that he fell to 10, if you'll remember. And then the last quarterback taken in the first round of that draft, Lamar Jackson, at 32. Kind of feels like, and I'm not comparing these players, they're not the same player, but it almost feels like a little bit of a Hendon Hooker situation. Don't really know where he's going to go. Ah, Could kind okay. of fall in that yeah. 30 to 40 yeah. range, take a flyer on him. I'm not saying Hendon Hooker's going to win the MVP, but he's that kind of guy that you talk to some people, and I was telling you off air, I talked with Ryan Leaf yesterday, and he's like, man, I got Hendon as my third quarterback on this list. And I've got him graded higher than Anthony Richardson, than Will Levis, and he's not the only one. I've talked to multiple people that have that same feeling. And so I can see him going in that 30 to 40 range, and he could be a guy that, you know, maybe it's game three, maybe it's game four, but he gets an opportunity and he doesn't give it back. 
Yeah, and and um and and to your point, if you just look at that draft, I mean, the quarterbacks who we think are good didn't go in the top five. Uh, yeah. So I, I I don't I mean, good 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 luck to those teams drafting at the top. I hope you think you have it figured out because these were all thought to be uh you know really good prospects that did not work yeah. out. Now now we should be clear though. I mean, not not all prospects are viewed the same, right? Like. Joe Burrow felt as can't miss as any prospect that we've ever seen. And well, he ended up being just that. Like, yeah. you didn't feel that about Mitchell Trubisky. No. Um, you, you might did have. Feel, you, last did year. That, you, did, <laughs> you did feel that about James Winston. Uh, I feel like coming out of college. That more, was certainly more than I the mean, other, national More champion. than EJ, more than Bortles. Yes. Yeah. yes all of that. Baker, um, you didn't feel that way. See, Baker Baker would kind of freak me out if I'll make a Bryce Young guy, right? Because I, uh, Baker was great in college yeah, different players but i i can understand but the size yes i mean I, simply the size yeah. thing and now that that's what cost baker but like baker had all the moxie yeah. he had all the confidence yeah. like i i yeah. don't know Bri- i thought that bryce baker is, was gonna do it i i can so see where you're talking about too though but bryce's his computer's a little different mm-hmm. as far as how he processes football that's that, i think that's what probably set, sets him apart but but i i can see some comps when you are you know, the same kind of size, and it hasn't worked out for many. Like, the fact that we can roll off who it's worked for, that tells you how few and far between it's actually been. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Drew and it's Russ. Yeah, that's it. That's the list. Um, Flutie! Uh, Shout out Doug Flutie. Uh, the yeah. man used to jump to throw passes in oh, the yeah. NFL. Like, in the pocket, line. jump <laughs> to throw a pass. And, original hey, jump he did it for a very, very long time. Also, drop-kicking beast. I, I, Flutie flakes. <laughs> Eat him. Okay, if you're a Saints fan, though, do not go look at the 2018 draft that I just laid out because you'll see the players that were selected after Marcus Davenport, and it's not going to make you feel good about Ooh, your day. Well, let's uh, – great vibes in the studio today, but let's try to ruin them with that next here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Go to centralplumbing.org, 925-8552 is the number, centralplumbing.org, centralplumbing.org. Or uh, when you overstink it, don't overthink it, okay? They've been fixing plumbing problems for 50 years. And they've been fixing it with employees who are licensed, bonded, and insured. Uh, with flat rate pricing, so no surprise or hit fees. With great warranty. A month of service work, a year on new installation. So after the job is done, you have peace of mind. Uh, so, what are you waiting for, man? I, I don't even think twice. You should either. 925-8552, centralplumbing.org. You shouldn't think twice in those 24-7 emergency service times, and you shouldn't think twice when you're getting a remodel. That's at home or your business. So if you have a business and you have like an entire floor and a big high rise, that's okay. They can come in, they can fix all of that. They've got the fleet available. You'll see it right there on the homepage. Even if it's just, you know, the main bathroom in your home, certainly they can handle that. They can do it all. Check it out all online, centralplumbing.org. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. At Corval Toyota in Opelousas, you can get 3.99% financing on select 2023 models. And we also have a large selection of pre-owned inventory. So come on down to Happy Town. That's Corval Toyota in Opelousas, Happy Town, USA. Hello, Samantha, dear, I hope you're feeling fine. And it won't be long until I'm with you all the time. But until then, I spend my money on back down on my last dime. Call her home in Baton Rouge. I'm ready, much put me on through. Gotta send my love down. Follow us on Twitter at 1045 ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench. Anytime. Hunt Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045 ESPN. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. 
Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walk. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good one. Let's go to invite you to join us for Thursday's AFR, presented by the Aesthetic Medicine and Anti-Aging Clinics of Louisiana. Brian Kelly meets with the media after the Tigers' final practice of spring, and we chat with Kendall Rogers. Join us, 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. He walked past this fish market, you know what I'm saying? Fish market. He stopped, he took a deep breath, he said, Woo! Good morning, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, man? I'm pretty good. Hey, man, I got a gang of that, man. Hey, hey, you ought to get a gang of that, man. My man on the guitar. Hey, pull on the drum. Hey, just, hey, everybody just crowd around the mic. I tell you all these motherfuckers. Hey, jokes come on, I got, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. First, I'm going to start off like this. Hey, help me sing it, homeboy. Come on. Say code 45 and two zigzags. Baby, that's all we need. We can go to the park. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. I remember rapping this song with like our Little League football team, like 11 years old, having no idea what anything, any of this meant. Um, <laughs> true. Very you know, true. I mean, big no true. Idea. Dude, the freaking... Yeah. Day World Championship popping off right now. I thought Ding had it won. Now Nepo's coming back. Whatever. Uh, Drama in the uh, chess world. Yeah, big time action. Where's it at again? Uh, Kazakhstan. Yeah. Yep. Shout out. Yep. Um, all right. So, Jake, uh, you mentioned you were going to press Saints fans by reading the names of the 2018 ta- draft taken after Marcus Davenport. I mean, we'll just a couple. I, I don't, I don't want to ruin everyone's 420. Uh, you know, Jermaine <laughs> Edmonds, who just signed a huge deal, linebacker uh, out of Virginia Tech, was with the Bills and signs a huge free agent deal this year. Derwin James ah. was after uh, Jair Alexander, uh, was also uh, after uh, him. Leighton Van Der Esch, uh, um, Cowboys linebacker. Um, DJ Moore, guy's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Even Hayden Hurst, Calvin Ridley, uh, Terrell Edmonds. Uh, Edmund's brother, who's so, also a very high-level player. Uh, there's a guy, Lamar Jackson. He's pretty good. Nick Chubb, don't know if you heard of him. Uh, Shaq Leonard from the Colts. So, pretty so good. like, this is doing two things. First off, those are all very good players, obviously. Really, but it's just showing me how incredibly ineffective Marcus Davenport has been. Yes. Because you could almost rattle off any name, and you're like, that guy's been better than Marcus Davenport has. He, he had the one flash two years ago where he had the nine and a half sacks, and last year just completely reverted to to nothing. Um, one thing, Jake, that I wanted to get into yesterday, and and Bill Connolly raised this. It wasn't the point of the article, but he wrote a piece on um, the fatal flaws in each quarterback prospect. And, and, you know, it's everything we've talked about, right? For Bryce Young, it's his size. For C.J. Stroud, it's like how will he deal with consistent pressure. For Will Levis, it's those too many picks. For Rich, and it's too inaccurate. Uh, but at the beginning, it kind of gets into a little bit of a nature versus nurture debate. And I feel very passionately about in life, just in life, that we consistently underestimate the nurture factor when it comes to human beings, the settings you are surrounded by both on the come up and everything else and how that can affect, like, like I do believe in, you know, innate talent and somebody having the ability to be good at something, but I feel like sometimes we give too much credit to talent and less credit to kind of what's 
going on around you. Like, okay, we went through all those quarterbacks who have failed. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, is it any surprise that Sam Darnold and Zach Wilson both went to the Jets, who have just been an awful trash right. franchise, or that these guys fail when they're getting drafted by the worst teams in the NFL? And so from that perspective, and I'm sorry I've only left you a minute here, I want to look at it two ways. What's the best environment to land in? And who will struggle the most leaving the environment they're in currently? Out of the NFL teams picking a quarterback in that top 10, what's Oof. the best environment? It's a great question, and I know we're up against the clock. But when you look at where you go, that matters as much as anything. It really, like, even, even Jamarcus. People want to say things about Jamarcus. He is, look, he has a lot of blame in it. I understand that. But if he doesn't go to Oakland, it's much better if you go to New England. Yeah. Or if you go to Denver. Like, it, it depends on where you go. That is such a large portion of it. So when we we look at this year, like there's not a franchise I'm like, oh, it's gonna be bad. That's gonna ask uh, it's gonna be awful. There's really not. I don't like, I think Houston's maybe the closest to that for me. It it is, but they've drafted well. They've turned their draft picks uh, you know, in, into draft capital and and they've given up capital for for star players as well. So it, it's not Oakland like when when the Raiders were going. Sure. You're right though. Of the group, Carolina Texans, Colts, I, I would say that they're probably the one that you have to watch out for the most, but there's not one like the Jets or the Raiders like we've talked about. Uh, okay, we'll get into this more. We got Coach Tarina coming up next here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Go to AccuTemp of Baton Rouge, AccutempBR.com. AccutempBR.com. Uh, look, it's Baton Rouge's best AC, heating, cooling, um, electrical company it's and, and it, if like if like if you don't believe me go look at the ratings okay the the online ratings reflect that uh, it also reflects their kind of core ethos which is service to the highest degree so the bottom line is it's time to take control of your comfort zone um yesterday jake i saw a tweet that said D before you dm me just know i keep my house at 75 uh i think that's insane i think that's insane but you know what that is that person's comfort zone okay but if you want to go 68, 70, 72, 75 even, the bottom line, make sure your system's running well, go to Accutemp. If you're at 75, it's crazy. I'm not coming. Yeah, I'm not DMing you. I'm not hanging out. Thank We're you for the We're not talking. You can, though, with AccutempBR.com. <laughs> Thank you for the warning. Value Ford has $2,000 off MSRP plus 2.9% APR for 84 months on new 22 Ford Expeditions. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Each year, Guarantee Media hosts a Radiothon to benefit Dreams Come True, the local organization that grants dreams to Louisiana kids suffering life-threatening illnesses and their families. We've interviewed these incredible kids and their stories warm our hearts. And none of it would be possible without your help. So we're asking for your support in our effort to making more dreams come true. Each year, our Dreams Come True Radiothon is powered by the Baton Rouge Clinic. Visit GuaranteeMedia.com to pledge your support today and thank you. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walk. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. There it is, the extra mile. 
on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Good morning, everybody. It is 8 a.m. on Thursday, April 20th. Today in Baton Rouge, expect cloudy skies with a high of 86. Coming up on OTB, LSU softball coach Beth Tarina joins the show in studio up next. And at 8.30, we talk college football with Ben Hartsock of Sirius XM. Also, LSU baseball coach Jay Johnson joins us at 9 a.m. And we have a new edition of Munchies with Chef Michael Johnson at 9.15. You can follow today's show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at OTB underscore ESPN or catch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel and subscribe for daily content. Hour number two of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studio, starts now. Where do we go? All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, T, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to OTB, hour number two. It's Thursday, and normally uh, Thursday is kicking off hour two. Uh, we talked to LSU head softball coach Beth Tarina over the phone, uh, but today we're truly blessed as we have Coach Tarina here live in studio. Coach, what's up? Thank you so much for joining us. I should come in studio more often. It's uh, like the place to be in it's Baton great. Rouge. I mean, this is it. This is where it's at. Yeah, this 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 random like third floor room <laughs> in this, this unassuming building off of yeah. government. Yeah, I it's agree. a very weird it building. It's the place isn't it? to be. <laughs> like when you're walking in, it's kind of a weird building. It, it is history. It's, it's got history. A lot of it's history. It's a hobbled together architecture for sure. <laughs> yes. Like it looks like a schizophrenic made it and just like took two buildings kind of mashed them together um but, i do like you know like downstairs used to be a morgue or something too God, this used to be a hospital here. yeah but you guys are here and the party yeah. is where you're at okay. yeah that's so, true. Yeah. there you go yeah i i have in my life been accused of um enjoying partying and bringing it with me so i would i would say that's probably accurate um so look okay the reason why coach is in studio today uh because she just told you she was here to, to oh, see yeah, the just best thing in Rouge. exactly exactly just hang out with us but on top of that uh, the Go Teal Walk uh, for Ovarian Cancer Awareness is going down this Saturday in Tiger Park. Um, Coach, you started this, right? Am I am I am I wrong here? Like like in terms of the history of this thing, because it has grown massively uh, over the years. I think April 2013 was when it first started, featured 216 walkers. By 2019, that had swelled to over a thousand people coming out to uh, Tiger Park to walk. What is it? Um, I guess, what does it do for you from kind of a pride standpoint to, to see that growth over the decade? Yeah, I definitely can't take all the credit. It's been an awesome committee of women that have helped develop it. But um, I did start the team in Teal um, when I got here. We had been wearing Teal at FIU, supporting my mom, um, who's a survivor. This year's walks on her birthday. Shout oh, out to Betty. Wow, hell um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, we started it in, you know, just something that was going to be small and turned into something really incredible. Um, and an awesome way to just support women in our community. And, you know, I've loved every minute of being a part of it. The uniforms are fantastic, by yep. the way. It's not just like wearing a little bit. I mean, if you saw last week against Auburn, I mean, those uniforms are super sharp. I know you are a person that, like like we do, you care about the uniform as well. So what goes into designing the uniform, and when do you decide to wear them? 
You know what's so cool? So I love the uniform, and everyone looks good in teal. It's just a great color on everyone. Looks like you know, too. like no matter you know what your coloring is, it's perfect. Really? I've never um, tried it. Well, let's do that. Let's so do even some for like, I'm a, as you can see, I'm yeah. a pretty pale boy. Yeah, it, it's gonna look great. Okay. I'm telling you, it's gonna look great. Army green. It's gonna look great. But the cool thing is, this year um, and last year, the entire SEC wears teal on Saturday. So every cool. SEC softball game you'll turn on on Saturday, the teams will be wearing teal. And the Go Teal Foundation has helped um, support all of the teams in purchasing their uniforms oh, and awesome. doing the things. So, um, yeah, we're in all of the SEC cities, which will be awesome. Yeah, and so, look, there's a bunch of ways that you can get involved. You go to GoTeal.com. That's G-E-A-U-X, Teal.com. You can register now. Um, the walk is going to be this Saturday. Of course, Mississippi State coming to town this weekend for a three-game series. The walk will be in the morning. You can find all the information uh, at go teal g e a u x teal dot com, uh, you get a great shirt. Uh, you support a good cause, right? At the end of the day, that's where all this money is going to raising awareness for ovarian cancer, fighting ovarian cancer, and obviously, like you said, coach, a cause that is very close to your heart. So um, that's going to be awesome. Tiger Park is going to be the place to be Saturday morning, uh, and then Saturday night, the place to be as y'all be taking on Mississippi State at seven o'clock. Before we look forward, we are on to Mississippi State. Before you look forward, it's been um, it's it's been a rough week, right? I know the end of the Auburn series did not go how you ought to play in a very just tough, hard fought loss, nine innings uh, on Sunday, and then McNeese in the midweek. Um, <clears throat> look, adversity happens to every team at one point in the season, right? How do you feel like, um, and how how do you try to get your team through this, and how do you feel like your team's dealing with it? Well, we did have a special guest speaker yesterday, which was awesome. So Coach Maneri and I had an event earlier oh, nice. in the day, and he called me and said, I want to talk to the team today. I want to talk to them, can I? And I was like, well, you have five minutes. And he said, I can't even say hello in five minutes. I'm like, exactly <laughs> why I gave you five. But, but he took about 10 minutes, but um, told us a story about his 08 team and going on a 23-game yep, winning streak that. and just a, a lot of really cool things. And I think it really – lifted us to a great practice yesterday. So appreciate my awesome coaching colleagues in Baton Rouge. They're a great community. That is, uh, I, I, I absolutely love hearing that. And so, you know, we, we always talk about on this show, um, in football, we always say one snap and clear, right? doesn't matter what you did the last play, all that matters the next play. Even if you did great, does not matter, right? All that matters is the next play. Have you all adopted, or, or what's a kind of a similar uh, softball? motto would you yeah, say it's the next pitch mentality there you so go. it's all about the next pitch the pitch before doesn't matter at all we're moving on to the next pitch and the next pitch is mississippi state which really cool that they're here this weekend you know they've been touched so personally with ovarian cancer and alex wilcox um losing their player um to ovarian cancer so it's going to be really special having them here but we're also ready to take them on on the ball field on yeah. friday and saturday night and um when you look at um this 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 last week and then you look forward to mississippi state what what are the elements that you think that you're most identifying? Okay, this is where we have to improve uh, in order to uh, have this go our way, the way that we want it to go. I mean, we're really one swing, one hit, one pitch yeah. away from every game, you know. And I think we've been out hitting our opponents. We've been out playing them. We just don't get it at the right time. So, you know, whether going back and, like, looking at our lineup and the order we're in or things like that, but ultimately just that one execution, one more thing, and we're right in it and – you know, I'm trying to go on that 23-game run. Hell yeah. And we only have nine left, but we're going to find 23, and we're going to win them. Yeah. Well, certainly battle-tested. I know that you talk about RPI all the time, and you still sit at number six on the RPI. So you've been battle-tested. You've played some really good opponents. And so eventually that's certainly going to play, uh, you know, pay off whenever you get to the playoffs and you get to tournament situations. Yeah, we're still in a really good spot, I think. You know, our body of work has been really good. It's been a really special yeah. season with our team. They're extremely talented. So, you know, we're going to just try to get back on track, LSU softball. And, and we've got some huge opportunity in front of us, Mississippi State, then Alabama and Georgia, who are two top 25 yeah. programs. So, um, you know, our fate's definitely in our own hands. Uh, what is uh, What do the Bulldogs do particularly well? What, 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 where, are they, uh, where, where do they present the biggest challenge? Yeah, I think their offense is probably the biggest challenge. You know, they have a couple of freshman arms. Um, that are one freshman arm that they've been doing a really good job with that we haven't seen before, so we'll have to learn about her. But um, I think their offense, they have some experienced offense, and you know they're capable of that big swing, so we'll have to try to keep them in the park. Let me ask you this. You, you talking about freshmen. So like in football, a lot of times you'll have a freshman you don't really know, and you're like, okay, let me go back to recruiting. Because a lot of times you're recruiting the same players. Yeah. Like, Do you do that? Do you like, hey, we recruited this player. I remember what we liked or maybe what 
we didn't like about that player. Yeah, I told the staff that last weekend for one of the Auburn pitchers. I was mm -hmm. like, well, I know her curve spin's good. I remember yeah. seeing that from sitting, <laughs> you know, two feet behind the plate or from camp. Like, yeah. I remember at camp, she had, you know, yeah. this spin rate on her drop ball. So um, I think we definitely, you know us, we use every single yeah. thing we can. Like, yes. well, you know what I mean? We know where they were last night. We know how they're going to wear their hair, if their ribbon's going to be, you know, maroon or white. We're ready for it. Yeah. And coach, when you look at the uh, the arms that you've really relied upon this year, obviously Alec Kilpone is a name that everybody knows very well. And this is a freshman, Sydney Burzon. And this is kind of the point in the year where uh, you hear about kind of you know some some proverbial freshman walls, right? I mean, it's a lot of softball that they're playing and on a high level against talent that they've never quite seen before. Um, and and as I said, she, she's throwing a lot of innings. You're having to rely on her. How do you how do you kind of help to get her through this? Uh, uh, kind of attrition point of the season. I think she's throwing well, so that is a good thing. I think, you know, like her stuff is getting better and better all the time, and I think she feels good about it. I think um, her stuff's always been so good, she hasn't really had to throw it to a spot. She could just, you know, fire it through there yes. and people miss it. So I think she's learning that we have to locate it here, and her location has grown as she's gone through the season. So I think she now sees that so much more and is just better and better at it. So I'd say she's just growing every time she goes out there. So I mean this in a positive way because mm. she's been dominant. Harry set up for No, question. no, no. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it is not. It is not. <laughs> I promise. No, no. I gotta go. This I'm is not it. it. I mean, because Allie's been doing it for so long, I'm pretty sure that Kristen Kane caught her first game. Yeah. yeah I, I, would not, I would not be surprised. I mean, it has feels, she it feels been that here? Way, dude. For so long, because I mean, from the moment she gets here, like you have to count on her. Now, yeah. So I, like I said. It's a positive. It's a sure. positive thing that she's been such a good player for so long. Yeah, and I think that's tough on her, right? There's, I, I can only imagine how many pitches are in people's system that Allie Kilponen has thrown right. against them. It's yeah. thousands and thousands of pitches, you know, and files that they've created for their team. So her job is hard. Yeah, there's no her going back to high hard. school for her. You don't have to. No, yeah. no. But Sid is kind of the unknown still, you know, So yeah. which is really fun. Cause Opposite ends of the spectrum. That is kind of fascinating. It about. is. It is. It is. They're definitely fighting two slightly different battles. Um, Coach Beth Tarina, I know you got to get out of here. You got to go over there on talk and talk to our guy Brian Haldane. But thank you so much for joining us this morning. It is the Go Teal Walk. It is going out in Tiger Park this Saturday morning. Go to G E A U X Teal. So that's T E A L dot com, and uh, you can still register there. You can just show up Saturday morning um, and and just get involved in a great cause fighting and raising awareness uh, for ovarian cancer. Uh, thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. And if you can't make it out, you can walk from home. You can register online to do that, too. Yes, so. yes. All the information is at geauxteal.com. Uh, coming up next, more Off the Bench. Keep it locked. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Uh, it's where the guest always has to stand here awkwardly as you do an ad read. Yep. Coach. But uh, look, but I'm excited. We love <laughs> Riverlands Insurance, okay? 225-206-1517. Um, that is the cell phone number for the father-daughter combo of Thomas and Megan email. They're going to get you right, okay? Uh, yeah, okay. If you got any insurance, you look, you call them up. Okay, they do the shopping for you. They save money. How about this from our guy Cody Walters? Uh, Jake, do you, do you have it pulled up? Do you want to read it? Oh, no, I got, okay, I got Stop. it right here. Uh, Riverlands insurance success story got dropped by a former insurance carrier. Best quote my broker could get was over three times what I paid last year. Called Thomas email in the middle of OTB when Jake read the number. He answered and saved me $3,700. I'm telling you, we get these testimonials like every day. 225-206-1517. Yeah, and we said, like, if you call him right now, when we said it yesterday, we said he will help you. Yeah. And it turns out that he, he certainly can do that. 225-206-1517. You know him. he's a softball guy, right? Oh. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $15,000 off all new 2022 1500 SCA trucks. And all new Bayou automotive vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right by you.
Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with Front to Back Boat Service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends, that's there for you at Front to Back Boat Service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to back boat service. Clash of the Cooks Jambalaya Showdown is back. Join us on Saturday, April 22nd at the Ostner Medical Complex at The Grove. We've got cooking teams of pros and joes serving up their best jambalaya and Cajun Creole dishes, all while helping raise dough for local families battling cancer. Bring the whole family for great food, live tunes, and good times. Clash of the Cooks Jambalaya Showdown presented by Ostner. Saturday, April 22nd at lunchtime. Help us paddle it forward. For tickets and more information, go to clashofthecooks.com. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Jimmy Hunter, Charles Hanegraaff for the Thursday edition of Game Time. It's live from Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar, 6 to 8 p.m. Thursday from Jolie Pearl, downtown, facing Town Square. Game Time on 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back. Uh, off the Bench, hour number two. A huge thank you to Coach Serena for stopping by. Again, GEAUXTL.com. It's a great time. Um, for the family, a great cause to get involved in, and it's there. Daniel Basham says this song is from I Am Legend, right? Surely you're not talking about about this. I mean, I think it actually is in I Am Legend, but I don't think about any Bob Marley song as being from, from something. something. Like this is yeah. Bob Marley. Like, like I don't. Yeah. I just. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I, mean, I don't yeah. know why that makes me feel old. Because like uh, you know. Danger Zone is like that's a banger, you know. But Danger Zone's from Top Gun. Yes, Danger. Yeah. You know yes, what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. This, I, I completely I agree. I can't go down that road with you. No, I am Legend used this. Yeah, it is not. Uh, yes, it is not yes, from yes, yes. I am. Legend. Are they making an I am Legend too? Did I hear that right? <laughs> I swear to God, I think I don't, that's true. I don't know. I. Um, it's kind of like they're making Greenland two, apparently, in Greenland one, like Gerard Butler, like. The Earth's destroyed. Wait, Greenland too? Hell. The, exactly. Like the Earth's destroyed outside of Greenland. Also. And they're going to make a Greenland too? Like, what are we doing? Here? You want to talk about a movie that lost a lot of momentum? Greenland. I remember I got sucked into watching it one night, and the beginning is scary. I mean, I, I talked about this on Snaps Day. I have that classic apocaly apocalyptic dream pretty often yeah. where the tidal wave's heading in, and I'm on the beach, and I'm just like, I'm about to die. Yeah. You gotta you gotta deal with that, right? <laughs> yeah. 
It's over. Uh, and so, I'm like, done. the beginning of that movie yeah, when everything's popping off yeah. and, like, the, the, the birds are flying, everything was really good. And then it just got so boring, I felt like. The, mm, I was just not the to whole break time, down like, Greenland uh, one, although I've done it on radio with Farnham plenty of times. Like, even, like, the, like, the camp that they got to go to and they're trying to get out and it's stressful and he's trying to get back. Like, all of that's good. It could have been better. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, look, I just thought the beginning was actually like yeah. kind of freaking me out yeah. and really They hit strong. the red line, yes. but instead of staying in the red line like Succession does, yeah. they grinded it's, the gears and he just <laughs> Yeah, just kind of. Uh, but I would look if it did well enough for Greenland too. Shout out. Gerard Butler's made a real nice career here as of late of like just finding action franchises yeah. that maybe aren't actually good movies, but they're yeah. like just enjoyable enough. And they cost like 20 million to make and yes. make like 55. Yes, yes exactly. It's you just know a you're gonna sweet make spot money. that he's in right now. Um, now I will say this. If they use the actual original kind of story of I am legend that the, the, the actual short story, it could be pretty interesting where have you ever heard about what the original like book is? It's, it's a short story. So I don't want, I don't know if you call it a book, but the original story is, um, it's same thing, vampires, whatever, blah, 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 guys alone, same way. Uh, and during the day, he goes out and he hunts vampires while they're sleeping because they can go out in the sunlight yeah. and kills them. Uh, but at the end of the movie, or at the end of the story, he gets brought, um, he gets captured by the vampires, and then he gets brought out in front of them and publicly condemned to death and basically learns he is their boogeyman. Because they're not like mindless, right. communicationless creatures. They they have their own society. Yeah. And he's the guy, like the vampire parents are telling the vampire kids, you know, when you go to sleep at night, like, watch out. Like, right. <laughs> this is the guy who sneaks yeah. in your house and kills you. Yeah. And so he is uh, he is the legend. Actually, I would be down that's way with better. that angle of it. I yeah. agree. I think that's way better. But uh, it, was, it was an all right. It, it, was, it was an all right movie, for sure. Um... Oh, Mac Lindsay says there's an alternate ending to the original I Am Legend where Will Smith survives, and they're using that as canon now and making a sequel with Will and Michael B. Jordan. All right, tight, I guess. I don't know. I think um, Michael B. Jordan's, like, a good actor. I think he's really good, but he, he doesn't change his emotion very much. No. Nah. Like, there's, a, there's one Michael B. Jordan. I don't know that I've seen much Michael B. Jordan outside of... Uh, Creed. The Marvel movies. I've never seen Creeds. Yeah. I've never seen any of the Creeds. Um, and I know he directed Creed three, so credit to him. But yeah, I don't know. Oh, he fan, looks good. The Fantastic, uh, Fantastic Four. Uh, I've seen. Wait, which one? I mean, the reboot with Miles Teller. No, Oof. I didn't see the reboot. Oof. Save yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, and nobody has yet to crack the nut on a successful uh, live action Fantastic Four. No. And maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Um, all right, we, let's do a little bridge segment here. We got Ben Hartsock coming up, and he can talk about tight ends and the NFL and college football and everything else. Uh, let's just do a little transfer portal bridge segment here. How about that? As the spring portal is officially open, Coach Kelly talked about it yesterday. And he mentioned that, look, now most schools are kind of looking for depth pieces, and yeah. it's hard to go out there and just find a starter at this point. And granted, there's not a ton of huge names out there, but there are some. There are some. Um, and there's a couple of linemen that should maybe be on LSU's radar. Now, probably the biggest name is Bear Alexander, a defensive lineman. The problem is, Jake, um, from the article you linked and what I read, yeah. it seems like Bear Alexander is going to USC. It feels What's like huge it. get for the Trojans, yeah. if that's yeah. the case. Yeah, it does feel like it. And this is a player that, remember, had two sacks in the national championship game. He was one of the, I mean, within this last Georgia defensive line that's going to have a top five pick, like he was one of the guys that stood out. He was a very highly touted top 45 player coming out of high school. Not really sure because he was playing a ton. He was a guy, his NIL value is $227,000. Damn. I'm not sure why he's leaving Georgia. I'm not sure what happened, but if you get him to come to your team T, that's what I'm thinking. I think it is, Hey, <laughs> I'm Bear Alexander. <laughs> I need even more money. Yeah. And who's going to pay? the highest, but it's crazy to leave Georgia, a team that has a very good chance to be back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back national champs. You're making, I mean, $227,000 right now, and you're playing a ton. You're a guy. But there is a an element of you are a guy. Can you be the guy? You'll yeah. be the guy at USC. Yeah, yeah, he will. And, and, and granted, USC is, they have committed heavily to fixing the front seven. 
And I want to say they've got like three or four all-conference D linemen that have already transferred in from mm -hmm. separate conferences. So now adding Bear Alexander, that makes like, okay, USC's done a pretty respectable job. Like Alex Grinch, uh, you can't use any more personnel excuses. Not this year, not with this D line that you've put together. And so, yeah, look, I'm sure that USC promised him more money, which is obviously going to help. And then, um, again, at Georgia, you know, you're not Jalen Carter, right? You're not, like, like there, there's just so many yeah. badasses as Georgia through the years that you, your impact, and you got the ring, you got the nanny ring, right? So it's like yeah. you're kind of freed from that expectation yeah, as them. well. Uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 why also like Ad Mitchell's like all right, I'll, you know I'll, I'll I'll peace out. You know my my race has been run. Um, He's from Denton, Texas, but went to IMG. California certainly would be. Well, his dad was at the USC <laughs> spring game taking pictures of Caleb. Yeah. Why your dad is not going to a random spring game right. just to hang out? No, he's not. Uh, <laughs> even though. You know, flights to Los Angeles are easy to get. It's a great time to visit this time of year. But, yeah, you're not really? going out there unless you have a, uh, a purpose. Um, so, sure. that's not going to matter too much to LSU. The names that maybe could, there's a couple of great guards. Our, our interior offensive linemen, we'll call them, in the transfer yeah. portal. Um, one of them is from A&M, Matthew Wyckoff, who I believe LSU is officially on the record has having offered. I'm not 100% on that. But uh, he's someone who was on the SEC All-Freshman team last year. Due to injury, he ends up playing center last year for the Aggies. He's six seven. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of boy of our boy Posick in him. Yeah. Being six seven playing center. Yep. Um, but look, LSU likes Charles Turner. They like Marlon Martinez, but you know, this is just the name of the game. You're always going to try to add bodies at positions where you feel like you're relatively thin and make it better. Wyckoff could do that. And then Jake, I know you like uh Emmanuel Pregnant, old boy from uh Wyoming. That Dude. seems to be, I mean, I think he's like top five overall in the portal right now. Uh, he Well, he's right on the edge of it. Uh, and if Barry Alexander is, in fact, going to USC, he would be top five available. He comes in at number six because Barry Alexander is still technically undecided. But he's been offered by the who's who. I mean, he is someone, I, I love the picture you put in the document. I mean, his wingspan is incredible. He is yeah, he's a, a big, boy. big old boy and like put together. And this is, for me, this is like a perfect piece. Now, what does he want? What's he looking at? Is he looking to come right in in a power five and be the starter? Because I don't know that he can do that at LSU. I mm. mean, LSU returns a lot. Now, True. he can compete for it, and maybe he wins a job. Or is he looking to come to a place like LSU, maybe sit this year, because he's still only a redshirt freshman, sit this year, and then you come in and you're the guy for two years, you get drafted. Like, it depends on what his mindset is. But... This is what you're looking to add. Right now, you're looking to add group of five depth that can come in and be just that, just be a depth piece. But does he do that, or does he go to others like Colorado, Arizona State that have offered him where he could probably step right into and be a starter? I, th I think, <clears throat> well, uh, I, think, I think he probably goes to somewhere where he's immediately going to play. Uh, um, what is fascinating about this, is uh, and these stories will be less interesting as time goes on, but to me they're still intriguing. Is that um, by succeeding in the way that he did at Wyoming, where he's been very good, uh, he's he's made himself a lot of money. Yeah, which I love to see. Like Colorado, who now has all sort of investment and nil buy-in that was never there pre-prime. Like he can go to Colorado, go get paid, and go play immediately at a bigger level in a Power Five conference, and and, and really at any school. The point is, it's just like, it's so, it's just such a drastic change from what we've been used to for the entire history of college football that, like, guys, if you're a high school player out there and you don't go to the major school right away, your race is not yet run. Yeah. Like, like, don't give up. Like, if you really believe in yourself, you're obsessed, you think you can do it. Uh, if you end up doing it, not only can you now leave and go test yourself on the higher level that originally didn't want to give you that look. But you will get immediate money. You will make money for that improvement. So, like, when he went to Wyoming, I'm sure he was frustrated, thought he was better or whatever. What did he do? He kept working. He's 6'6", 320. Um, like you said, well put together, looks jacked. And now he stands to uh, go somewhere and get paid. I, I love that you said that. We have not talked enough about that, T-Bob. And I just talked to Hartsock. He's good. He can wait just a couple more minutes. Chill out, Benny. Uh, um because that is an option. Like that is something now that is available. Like you don't have to, you don't have to be the guy straight out of high school. Like if you yeah. go somewhere like Wyoming, that's okay. 
That's okay. Yes. Like, even if you go somewhere like, you know, East Tennessee State, yeah. like, you're going to be okay. Like, you can find your way. Like, keep working. Keep grinding. That's a part of NIL Transfer Portal that no one talks about, but it's a good side of it. In my opinion, now, those schools in the FCS, I apologize, but sorry. Like, if you go to East Tennessee State and you outplay that and you get a chance to make a couple of dollars and you get a chance to go to the group of five, power five, whatever it is, that's the old American dream a little bit. Yeah. There. Uh, 100%. And so, um, gosh, who was it that we were? Um, Olu Oluwatimi from Michigan. Ah, uh, yeah. Very God, good what a player. Fun name. Very good player. We had him three or four days ago. I didn't even realize this. He started at Air Force. I didn't know that either. I thought didn't, he was always at Michigan. I, well, no, I mean, so he starts at Air Force. Yeah. And because that's that he didn't have any options, right? And he's he's like, dude, I'm skinny, I'm losing weight, like I wanted to be a football player. I knew this wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah. And so then he transfers to Virginia. Then he plays at Virginia for three years. Oh, and then he's wow. like, you know, this isn't this isn't getting the most out of what I can be. He then goes to Michigan. And now he's going to be like right now he's the third center in this upcoming draft and had a hell of a year for Michigan. He won the Remington, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, for him, like, that's – he started Air Force, then goes to Virginia. Even though Virginia's a power five, it's not Michigan. Goes to Michigan, does really well in the NIL space, plays on a really good team, back, you know, gets to a college football playoff and loses to TCU in a disappointing loss. But still, like, another story of a guy that started here, didn't have options out of high school, so he goes to the Air Force and then gets a chance to go to Virginia, then gets a chance to go to Michigan. Uh, yeah. So like, again, I mean, the entire point of this is, you know, keep at it. Okay. Uh, because the ability to rise and benefit off of that rise, you no longer have to, you no longer have to wait for, oh, the NFL will find you no matter what, which, which, you know, still rings true, but now you can make sure that they find you. Uh, all right. Ben Hartsock, Sirius XM off campus, Sirius XM 84 with Jay Kester. It's if you want to hear a conversation, between two dinosaurs, right? A conversation yep. between like snake hip bones, which obviously don't matter anymore. They still have them, but they don't matter because they don't have legs anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, that's coming up next with fullbacks and yackles yep. chopping it up. Keep it locked, OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, we want you to go see Dr. Zhang at the Advanced Eye Center and get some sports vision therapy, okay? Dr. Zhang has been doing this for 40 years, y'all. The only accredited uh, sports vision therapy uh, center in the entire state. And the chances are you don't realize just how much your athletic potential is being mitigated by your vision, right? The impact that it has. So figure it out. Where you're weak, where you're strong. How can we improve by enrolling your kids in the sports vision therapy training camp? They get going on an advanced eye center. Find them on Facebook for grades three through six, seven through 12. Uh, it, this is ahead of the curve stuff, y'all. Yeah. Take advantage of the advanced eye center. Yeah, I mean, look, it doesn't have to be what it is currently right now. Like, you can improve. That's what they're there for. That's what this camp is for. I cannot wait to take my 10 year old. There's things that I yep. know that he can work on. He can train his eyes. You can do it as well. 225 769 6010. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I drove myself to the ER, had heart surgery, and drove myself home 24 hours later, feeling fine. Starting running again after the procedure. I'm getting excited thinking about it. I had no pain, nothing. I felt great. And right then and there, I was like, oh my God, I'm back. I'm back. It's just amazing. Oshner Health. Long live you. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside off the bench anytime on Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. The world's leaders in obesity 
research, obesity medicine, and obesity science are right here. We're doing something that no one's ever done or trying to answer a question that no one's ever asked before. Pennington is a real jewel when it comes to research. We are finding the solutions to the world's worst chronic disease, which is obesity. Louisiana needs Pennington Biomedical. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walk. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. All right, let's say ah. Ah. Hmm. Where'd my spotlight go? Super weird. Brian Kelly and the LSU Tigers wrap up spring practice with the 2023 National L Club Spring Game. Our coverage starts Saturday at 1 p.m. right here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Uh, welcome back. Banger. As we welcome Ben Hartsock here on OTB, host of Off Campus Series XM84. Ben, what's up, man? How's it going today? Feels good. Feels like an appropriate intro. Yep. Like being home with you boys. Got the good energy. It's beautiful out. Things are going well. Well, your voice, Ben Hartsock, sounds like the lacrosse game against Sprayberry went well. I mean, mm. am I reading the voice right? No. Oh. No. Oh, the girls no. fell. <laughs> it, it, the, girls, the girls lacrosse team, the mighty Tequila Falcons, landed with a thud. Finished the oh. season. Five straight losses. Ooh. There's all there's some there's rumblings there's rumblings that that coach isn't up to the task they're, they're you know they're starting to look around a little bit it's bad bad things are happening but in the Hartsock house we're finding the positives okay we're focusing on a season of growth mm-hmm. we're focusing on the positives and we're going to control the controllable I um I had no idea we were talking about Decula Jake. Yeah. Screw Decula. Oh, I Decula forgot you're from the area. hell for all yeah. I care. Who did I lose my nine-year-old first year of tackle football county championship to? Decula. Who beat me the next two years, my Duluth Wildcats, in the semifinals each year? Decula. Okay, mm. I got nothing but hate in my heart for Decula. I'm very happy <laughs> to hear that they fell flat on their face, Ben. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, all I know is dynasties come and dynasties go. Mm. That's that's. That's the, the story of here is, is that it's, it's hard to maintain. I, I heard a coach say to get to the top of the mountain is passion. To stay at the top of the mountain is fatigue. And right now, the school is struggling. <laughs> oh, I actually, I, that's actually yeah. a very, uh, write, very write that good down. Quote. I'm going to steal that for sure. Yeah. Um, so I love, I always love when Ben and Jake get together because as we said last segment, it's a bit like a couple of dinosaurs chopping it up. Mm hmm. You know, a couple of guys who positions are now extinct in the NFL, the Yacklin fullback of your yeah. no more to be had, even though our guy uh, Matt Rule is trying to bring it He's back trying. to Nebraska. Yep. Um, ben, but look, when you talk about tight end, the, the Saints are in the market, okay? 
Uh, they want one. They got Juwan Johnson, but they are in the market for another one. Uh, who are your top tight end prospects in the draft? Maybe that could like realistically be available for the Saints at 29 or, or 40. Well, I mean, anywhere through there, you know, that, that late first to third round, that's the value play. If you look at the two best tight ends in the game right now, George Kittle and and Travis Kelsey, both those guys were mid-round draft picks. Kelsey in the second, uh, and Kittle all the way back in the fourth. Mm. And so, the reality is the and, and even if you look across like historically, Gronk was a second rounder. Like you don't have to be a top ten yeah. pick to be a, a great tight end. And so this year's class, to me, there aren't any. The, the only unicorn is this guy Darnell Washington uh, from <laughs> Georgia, but he's a unicorn in the way that's not valued in the NFL. Uh, Darnell Washington, six foot seven, two seventy, with like three percent body fat. It's an incredible like human creation. God's like was showing off with that. Uh, but because he's more of a attached to the line of scrimmage, kind of that traditional Y position, that's that's not a first round draft pick. That you don't you don't spend first round draft picks on that. You do that with guys like Kyle Pitts that run a, a four three, four four forty being about that size. So Washington is a unicorn, but it's in a, it's a down market for yeah. those kind of types of skills. So I have a very tight pattern of guys that are, you know, you could, you could, it's, it's a floor versus ceiling kind of uh, play with, with Dalton Kincaid from Utah, Michael Mayer from Notre Dame and Sam Laporta from uh, Iowa. Those guys, I think their floor is they could be a Pat Fryer move, a Mike Gusecki, a Cole Komet, like established, reliable, quality starters in the NFL. That's kind of worst-case scenario. Best-case scenario, you get a guy that turns into George Kittle, and you got one of the best. It, it's hard to speculate. And, and, and so much of what is going to determine whether they just become a dude or, become, or they become the dude is – the, the, the franchise they're taken to, the quarterback relationship, like quarterback tight end relationship is magic. If you look at kind of over the recent history in the NFL, you look at that relationship between Tony Romo and Jason Witten, Matt Ryan and Tony Gonzalez, Cam Newton and Greg Olson. Like there is some magic to a tight end and quarterback relationship. Kelsey and, uh, and, and Patrick Mahomes, obviously right now is being played out in real time. That these, these tight ends, Mayer, Kincaid, and Laporta, they're all within a tenth of each other at their 40. They all had similar arm length and vertical jumps. And, and so it's kind of like pick your superlative. What, what do you want? Dalton Kincaid, like we were, me, me and Jacob yesterday on the show, we're talking about Kincaid has the most natural pluck. He can run that scene, has loose enough shoulder and torso action to be able to be running full speed one direction. But, all, but turn his shoulders and waist and effortlessly pluck that ball out of the sky. Michael Mayer is a little bit more polished, that Notre Dame brand. When you think about uh, Kyle Rudolph and Cole Komet coming out of Notre Dame, Notre Dame ha is a brand of, of tight end. Sam Laporta, another guy with Iowa, has a spectacular pedigree at the tight end position, and Laporta fits that bill. He's the nastiest of the three. The only guy that would was ever asked to be placed on the line of scrimmage, double team block, or even one-on-one -on -one block and cave down the right side of a defensive line when you run single back power. Most of these other guys in the blocking game, they're kind of say, hey, we just want you to backside cutoff. We want you to free release up to the safety, which is the easiest thing that you can ask a tight end to do in those circumstances. Laporta was asked to actually get down there and do some of that dirty work. So I really like all three of these guys. I think they've got really bright futures. Uh, but the, the fork in the road of where their, their top end output versus an average output, a lot of ways are outside of their control, but based on the franchise they go to and the relationship that they may or may not form with the quarterback. Well, Ben, if we're looking at this from the Saints point of view, I mean, everything that you just said, like Dewan Johnson, he's an F. He's not a Y. Uh, Taysom Hill is certainly an F. He's not a Y, but they look like they want to take a tight end. Now, I don't know that they want to take a true Y. Maybe they take an F that can be a Y in certain situations. And so, to me, like Sam Laporta, what you're talking about, like that would fit the narrative. A guy certainly that can line up as an F in the slot, 
run the route on the route tree and do it at a high level. But also, if you put him in line at a Y position, he's not going to be out of place like Dalton Kincaid or some of these others would be. Yeah, Kincaid is um, the one that I've seen the least amount of him put his hand in the dirt and say, okay, we need you to, we need you to hold up here. And so he was 55% of his uh, snaps were from the slot. So you're with Mike Mayer and Sam Laporte, you're going to have more evaluation tape to say, okay, what's this guy look like in those circumstances? But so much of being that attack traditional wide tight end today, it's about want to. Like Jimmy Graham, when he was with the Saints, the guy built like a power forward. He had all of the traits to to be a, a, an attached, get the job done, yeah. blocking tight end. He just didn't want it. Yeah. And, and But the, the flip side of that was Greg Olson, a teammate of mine with the Carolina Panthers. He was leaner, narrower, not as uh, stout at that point of attack, but he would at least stick his face mask in there and try to battle the good fight. That's all they're asking for, especially in today's NFL that is so spread out and, and 11 personnel. So I would say Mayer and Laporta and, and maybe even Luke Musgrave. Luke Musgrave is another guy that yeah. I've kind of thrown yeah. in there from Oregon State. He's a little lighter, a little leaner, better athlete, kind of looks like Greg Olson in his build. Uh, but being at Oregon State, they're another team that played some smash mouth football. I saw him do some double teams up to the linebackers. So there's some, uh, you know, but he's got the least amount of production. The other thing from these top three guys I have, tremendous amount of production. 180 catches for Kincaid, 175 for Mike Mayer, 150 for Sam Laporta. And that's Sam Laporta catching 150 passes from Iowa. That's like a moonshot. <laughs> You heard, uh, you know, Ben's been talking a lot about the draft because you heard him hit a little Kuiper cadence there. You know, a little thinner, a little slender, better athlete. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Ben, I, I made Ben talk a lot of draft yesterday. <laughs> hey, uh, Ben, uh, real quick on the way out here, uh, Ohio State opening as at number one in the ESPN FPI, giving the best chances to win a national championship. Why in the hell should we trust the Buckeyes when the Wolverines are just out here beating y'all's ass every year? Wow. Yeah, the FP, <laughs> FBI is like artificial intelligence. Nobody <laughs> quite understands what it is. Like when you talk to, like you, I've heard Reese Davis, who works for ESPN, he he has stood on in national television and said, "I don't really know." It's like we built this algorithm, and we really don't really know exactly what it means, but we trust it. I also hear a lot of these like tech people say the same thing about artificial intelligence. Yep. There's an element of it we don't quite wrap our head around. So I'm with you. Like I, I'm asking Buckeye reporters, I'm asking Wolverine reporters, hey, this is the first year where without question, it is Michigan's conference in the Big Ten. Michigan Ooh. is the big dog. They are at the top of the mountain. That's the like the two years ago, everybody got shocked. Okay, Michigan took care of business. Last year, they became it became became a pattern. They did it twice in a row. So now this is the first off season and going into a regular season where we're going to unquestionably say this is Michigan's conference to lose right now. So it's that that doesn't jive with the FBI for me. I don't I don't know what to make of that because it is Michigan's era. Uh, ben, you're the man. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, filling us in on some draft prospects, allowing me to be so disrespectful. With that last question, I apologize. Look. Uh, I know how it goes, right? I watched Alabama beat our ass like eight years in a row. Um, uh, you have a great day, Ben, and uh, everybody loves catching you and Jake on Sirius XM84. Always appreciate it, fellas. Have a good day. All right, hey, take Benny. it easy, Ben Hartsock. I had no idea. I don't think I knew that Ben. So he lives in Georgia. Now. So, so when he played Cole for Falcons. the Falcons, he moved there. They loved it. They yeah. never left. And because of that, Bobby Carpenter, another one of my co-hosts, former Buckeye as well, calls him barely a Buckeye Ben. Oh wow, he's gone. He's gone because native because he's yeah, like he's, he's more with like the Atlanta, mm -hmm. Georgia. He's got some land out there, Bo. I mean, yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. He goes and watches like SEC baseball randomly now. Oh wow. Yeah. So Bobby's upset by that, and Bobby's like the mayor of Columbus. Does Ben even go on the Buckeye cruise? No. Wow. wow. I know. Unbelievable. That's why he calls him barely a Buckeye Ben. Unbelievable. All right. When we get back, close on hour two next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com.
Value Ford has $2,000 off MSRP plus 2.9% APR for 84 months on new 22 Ford Expeditions. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Each year, Guarantee Media hosts a Radiothon to benefit Dreams Come True, the local organization that grants dreams to Louisiana kids suffering life-threatening illnesses and their families. We've interviewed these incredible kids, and their stories warm our hearts. And none of it would be possible without your help. So we're asking for your support in our effort to making more dreams come true. Each year, our Dreams Come True Radiothon is powered by the Baton Rouge Clinic. Visit GuaranteeMedia.com to pledge your support today, and thank you. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all of that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water. That's there for you. You want an HD sonar, where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends. That's there for you at front-to-back boat service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to back boat service. Clash of the Cooks Jambalaya Showdown is back. Join us on Saturday, April 22nd at the Ostner Medical Complex at The Grove. We've got cooking teams of pros and joes serving up their best jambalaya and Cajun Creole dishes, all while helping raise dough for local families battling cancer. Bring the whole family for great food, live tunes, and good times. Clash of the Cooks Jambalaya Showdown presented by Ostner. Saturday, April 22nd at lunchtime. Help us paddle it forward. For tickets and more information, go to clashofthecooks.com. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly Go join us for the Thursday edition of Hanny Time. Mike Scarborough from TigerBait.com is talking LSU spring game, and Chris Ross Vogelu from Boot Crew Media is talking Saints draft. Hanny Time, noon weekdays, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What happened to the Stoner thing? I song? mean, we just we veered. Like, you're, you're we kidding, veered right? just for what? Benny. You're kidding, right? No, what is this? I don't know what this is. Am I Rick it? James, Mary Jane. Oh no, I didn't know that. It's like My a... bad. Nice job. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. No, I've never. I look. I'm not a music guy, so I apologize because I was going to take I the blame because I veered with Benny and the Jets because that's Ben's. That's his theme song, but I, Mars on top of it. Yeah, good job. I apologize, uh, but I'm actually going to rescind saying you were right about Cohawk. Um, further research says that uh, there's a little gray area. It, nobody's wrong, but nobody's right. It, is it, it kind of like be, Mario saying Atlanta? 
I think it's kind of <laughs> like our classic Atlanta Braves Qatar cutter situation where you can find people. Where that I was are gonna right, say and you're wrong. Yeah. No. 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 Again, <laughs> nobody was wrong. <laughs> Both are acceptable. That I think was Quahog and Quahog. That was one of the things. Like I had people hit me up on Twitter that were for sure that I was right, you were wrong, and then other people that you were yeah. right and I was completely wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I, think, I think we have a similar situation with Quahog and Quahog. So okay. we'll. Uh, so I just want the record to show that I'm not. I want to take back the audio yesterday where I apologized tomorrow. What's your favorite city to say? Um, ooh, I, I, I grew up in amazing. Alpharetta, which That's is pretty good. satisfying. Pretty Mine's also in Georgia. Um, Marietta, Duluth. Oh, Duluth. Oh, yeah. God, Duluth. I, love, Duluth. I mean, hi. Also, Duluth, Minnesota. Yeah, but that's not as good as Duluth. Well, yeah, that's who the, that's who lost to the Kula Falcons every year were my Duluth Wildcats. Yeah, I love saying Duluth. Uh, Natchitoches, Palo Alto. Oh, Natchitoches is great. Palo Alto. Can you I'm spell Natchitoches off the top of your head? Look at me. Look at me. N a t c h i o. Oh, you were close. Yeah, no. You, were you can do it on the top of your head. I can't. N a t c h i t o c h e s. That am I sure? Yeah. No, it's you right. got it right. No, no, I'm sure you did, but I'm saying like I cannot actually be used to fact check. I've always really enjoyed saying I'm not very good at it, but Guadalajara, I find to be oh, let very say satisfying. That. Guadalajara. Okay. Guadalajara. All right. um, it's just yeah, like a lot of it's very rhythmic. Yeah. It hits these little up and downs. It's got an R at the end, a little R roll at I'm the end. Lie, I got a little nervous, like spelling a word that I know oh, I know how to spell. I feel like the spelling be all over again, spelling. like in like elementary school. My heart's beating kind of fast. Taylor, do you have an answer on that one? I don't have a city, but uh, always like Colorado. Kind of rolls off the tongue a little bit. So you get, states how go, you Colorado. said it. Yeah, Colorado. I don't know what you just said, Colorado. but like, it's like Nevada, Nevada. I mean, this people are very particular. Did you say Guadalajara? Off the <laughs> bench with Hester and T Bob. Colorado. <laughs> Colorado. Uh, go to Rejuve Medical. Restore me, refuel me, rejuve me. RejuveMedical.com. Feel younger, feel better, faster, stronger. Not PF Flyers. No, sir. It's hormone replacement therapy, or maybe it's not. Okay, because that's the point. You go in, you get the free console, get your labs drawn, get a custom plan made for you. And ask about metabolization optimization while you're in there. It's the new hot uh, treatment on the market. Rejuve Me Medical. Tell them where locations are, Jake. It's uh, the hottest, by the way. Yes. Uh, you can find locations now across the state of Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Metairie, Slidell, and now in Shreveport up in the Port City. So if you're listening to us on 1130 AM, the Tiger, we are talking to you. But you can go to the website no matter where you're at and find a list of conditions they can treat and get your consultation set up today. That's at rejuvemedical.com. Give them a call in Baton Rouge, 225-719-4526. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $15,000 off all new 2022 1500 SCA trucks. And all new Bayou automotive vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right by you. The world's leaders in obesity research, obesity medicine, and obesity science are right here. We're doing something that no one's ever done or trying to answer a question that no one's ever asked before. Pennington is a real jewel when it comes to research. We are finding the solutions to the world's worst chronic disease, which is obesity. Louisiana needs Pennington Biomedical. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walker. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all of that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. There it is. The extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. 
supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans hey what's up y'all it's that time again it's heating up your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water it's time to take your boat to the next level with front to back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's gonna blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends, that's there for you at front to back boat service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to back boat service. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Good morning, everybody. It is 9 a.m. on Thursday, April 20th. Today in Baton Rouge, expect cloudy skies with a high of 86. Coming up on OTBOT, LSU baseball coach Jay Johnson joins the show up next. And we have a new edition of Munchies with Chef Michael Johnson at 915. You can follow today's show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at OTB underscore ESPN. Or catch us on YouTube at the 1045 ESPN channel and subscribe for daily content. OTBOT live from the Mercedes Benz Baton Rouge studio starts now. All Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T Bob A Bear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob. All Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back to OTB Thursday. Hour number three, and every single Thursday, we are very lucky on this show as we get to talk to the head man of LSU baseball, Coach Jay Johnson. Uh, Coach, thank you so much for waking up with us once again this Thursday. Big series coming up. We'll get into all of it. How are you feeling today, Coach? Good, good. Got in late last night here to Oxford and get the guys up and rolling and ready for a good day to get ready. Okay, is that is, is that a bus trip, Coach? Is that normal? Yeah. Getting near that early, the uh, the the full like day. So not not traveling on Thursday, but but having a full day to acclimate there. Well, when we go on the bus, I like to do that. I think yeah. um, you think about you practice on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday nights. You're not going to do a whole lot at home, so we spend that time to travel. Okay. And then today, you get them into you know study hall, weight training, get a practice over there. And then a full day after that, it kind of is like we're at home. And that worked out for us last year at uh, Mississippi State in Alabama. So decided we were going to stay with it. That's cool. That's, that's, it's it's going to be fun for the fellas too, right? Like I always find that there's nothing better for um, accelerating like team bonding and everything else and getting out there on the road together. It's and more of a pro style trip. Us football yeah. guys, like we didn't, they didn't give us that much time. Uh, no, 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 that is true. Uh, then again, we didn't have the right, you know, we were flying or whatever. So. Uh, hey, coach. So I know the midweek game, the result was not what you wanted. And um, I, I know you had some very interesting quotes about like taking losses to heart and kind of what you learned over the years. But from my perspective, it is hard to overstate how excited I was to see Javen Coleman out there, great inning, three up, three down, two Ks, fighting back uh, from 3 1 against like. How was it getting to see Javen Coleman back on the mound after um, that lengthy recovery that you have to go through after Tommy John? Yeah, that was awesome. I'm really happy for him. It's actually the fastest recovery from that surgery what? I've ever seen. And Javen deserves a lot of credit for that in terms of the work that he put in. Um, he obviously was a huge part of our team last year. And I've, I've stated before, I really would have liked to see him you know, if we just had kept him healthy, yeah. how 2022 might have turned out. I mean, we were yeah. close to going to Omaha anyway. So 
But to get him back right now, very timely for this team. So it's, it's great for him. It's a great lift for our team. Yeah, Coach, what's that progression going to be like for him? You give him an inning the other night, and obviously, like you want to slow play this, you want to make sure that he is doing exactly what he needs to be doing as far as building up to full strength. So what's that going to look like? Yeah, I think, um, you know, he responded well yesterday. There wasn't right. a ton of soreness, which was great. Um, so, you know, you, you can probably elevate him, uh, you know, 15 pitches to maybe another inning. Uh, but we'll do that slowly. Right. Um, what we're kind of looking at is, do we want to build it up or do we want to use him twice a week? If you use him twice a week, then the pitch count's got to stay low in those outings. Or do we, you know, continue to build him and see if we can get, you know, one good shot out of him? And uh, that's still something that will probably be determined by how he responds each time he throws. And um, But so far, so good with the first one. And certainly excited to get him back out there again. You know, Coach, uh, one thing that I love, and it's 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 a bit odd, right? Because when when you talk about y'all's team, the season you've had, um, there's no other team in the SEC that has a winning conference record whose opponents also have a winning conference record, right? So you've played the toughest team, and you've won every series, uh, and you've held that number one ranking. But you know, with that number one ranking, we we you know we look at quibbles, and we look at okay, where can you be better? You got to be better here, here, and, and you critique even though things have been good, right? And I think a lot of times when there is that noise as players, um, there's a temptation to get defensive, which is why I really kind of loved what Cade Beloso had to say uh, yesterday. As he says, quote, we haven't been playing our best brand of baseball. And that's something we've been talking about, right? Even with the Kentucky series, we don't feel we play great. We're going to fix things, no doubt about it. Um, I feel like that really speaks to the leadership of this team have you have you noticed your own team saying yeah look the results are good but we can be better yeah no question about it you know one of my things i say to them all the time is we're not going to accept in winning what we wouldn't accept in losing mm. and there's only two teams i think in the country that have as few a losses as we do and the schedule that we've played it that's a good accomplishment for those yeah. guys and what it also does is when you play good opponents it exposes some of the things that you need to get better at. And there's, there's a lot of things, you know, a, we need to get healthy B, you know, we need to make sure we're throwing strikes. C, we need a couple more pitchers to step up. You know, when we've played good opponents, you know, they've put a little more pressure on us and defensively not quite as good as we were early in the year, you know, offensively hard to pick at right now, to be honest with you, when you're scoring, you know, 10 runs a game, but there's yeah. a few things <laughs> good bats per game that, you know, they hear about it and it needs to be a little bit better. So uh, I, I love that about them. You know, we have bigger vision, you know, something we talked about this year is just we're going to play to a standard that is above winning and really awesome to hear Kate say something like that. I didn't know he said that um, because I feel like they've bought into that and doing a great job with that thought. Well, and, and I just want to stay on Cade for a second because uh, without a doubt, I mean, we've talked about Gavin Dugas plenty this season, but, you know, right beside Dugas is maybe like the most heartwarming story of the year is after Beloso suffers that just brutal injury before the game starts, just like the worst possible way to go out as an athlete after all the offseason work is done for him to now come back to be the bonafide everyday DH hitting, just mashing it like he is. Um, it was well, a fan. It's awesome to see uh, what's it been like as a coach watching Beloso's rise uh, through this year. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, uh, you know, he, he was not coming off a good season when we came in here. And I remember meeting with him in the summer, you know, within a week of getting the job. He drove over and we sat down and watched some video and, and said, hey, we're going to strip down everything that you're doing right now and start over. And he did it. He put in a lot of work with Mark Wanaka and the cages and has, has done everything we asked him to do. Well, then he gets hurt. And then for a while, there was this thought of like, hey, I think I'm just done. Wow. And I'm glad we were able to talk him into coming back. Yeah. And uh, I think he would tell you he's glad that he came back as well. Has become a big part of our team. And, and not only that, he was a little bit squeezed out early on because of some of the other injury stuff. We just we couldn't get all those guys in there. Yeah, And just stayed with it. And, and now has taken really good at-bats for us and you know makes us a better team with his presence in there. And I'm finally happy to see that because he, he deserves a lot of credit for sticking to it. 
Yeah, I mean, Coach, it kind of speaks to the mindset of a couple of different guys. I mean, Beloso and then Gavin Dugas, guys that maybe mm -hmm. initially weren't in there, but whenever their number was called, I mean, they've stood up and they've stood tall and they've been great leaders and they've been very productive on the field. Now, I would assume you're probably looking for something very similar as far as maybe an arm that you can count on. I know like Bryce Collins, as of late, has been a guy, and you know him very well. I mean, he's been in a couple of different places with you. It looks like someone like that, right? Maybe started a little slow, but starting to find the things that we have seen him do in an LSU uniform before. Yeah, for sure. And uh, that was a great appearance, two great appearances last week with yes. Bryce. He pitched really good up at Tulane. And then, obviously, the closing out that Kentucky game when we needed it the most. And he was one of our best pitchers last year, yeah. statistically, that was returning. And then just kind of got off to this weird start, which was kind of odd because He'd been throwing the ball good against our team leading into the season. But, you know, he just he's, he's a mature guy. He's 23 years old. He's not rattled by a little bit of failure. He just kind of stuck with it, was kind of taking one thing at a time to piece together, and um, was confident he'd get back to where he is. And, and we really needed that, like you said, and, and it's great to see. Coach, um, can I ask you what is, uh, I'm sure, a, a very kind of neophyte, like, uh, layman question about Tommy White that I've kind of been wondering all baseball season, which is uh, about his two-strike stance, right, where he almost gets in, like, that Jeff Bagwell, that crouch, you know, like, just, but, but, but I guess what I'm asking about is why the change of approach, right? Like, if, if that's what you do when there's two strikes, why not? adopt that stance from the, you know, th throughout the entirety of the at-bat. The great Jeff Bagwell reference right there. <laughs> <laughs> Showing our age. Yeah, you know, um, that's, a, that's a good question. He actually does it uh, before two strikes sometimes at certain okay. at-bats. And, and we have a thing, like, I've told him, like, hey, man, if you just did that from the outset, like, you would hit 500. But, you know, <laughs> he, he's so in control of what he's doing. Yeah. Um, you know, very rarely have I seen him get outside of himself uh, since we got going and, and got started. He's managed the zone incredibly this year. His strikeouts are super low for a guy that gets to that kind of power. Yeah. He's a clutch hitter. Uh, you know, he's really coachable. And I, I just I couldn't speak higher about him and the advance that he's taken for us. And um, did a big time obvious development. Hey, getting him here, but then him following through with the, you know, contribution and I'm perfectly good with where he's at as a hitter and um, he's doing a great job and uh, we're lucky he's at LSU. Coach, obviously like football, baseball mentality is a little bit different, but I can remember, you know, being in San Diego, we had a couple of running backs go down and I was the fullback and I remember Norv bringing us in and he's like, hey, you, Mike Tolbert, you are fullbacks, but I need y'all to be both because we're down some numbers here and kind of challenging you. Like, hey, step up. It's going to be your turn. Even though it's not, maybe not comfortable for you, we need you right now. Do you have those same conversations with your team right now? So, like, you've had injuries, obviously, on the mound. Like, do you bring guys in and say, hey, look, we've seen you do it before. We need you to step up. Or do you let that kind of happen organically? You know, I think what's good about our team is we have, we have a lot of good players and a lot of guys have a lot of confidence in themselves mm -hmm. and sometimes they're just waiting for their opportunity. Like um, Ethan Fry is going to be a superstar here and he's a backup and only has 14 at bats. But if we had to start him tomorrow night, I'd be perfectly okay with that. And so yeah. would his teammates. So, um, you know, there's times I'll pull guys in and mentally or psychologically have a discussion that I think might help them get to their best performance. That uh, happens a lot actually, but in terms of, being ready and stepping up, like all of these guys want that. Like Griffin mm -hmm. Herring has been great for us, kind of yeah. had his first road block last weekend. But I mean, I couldn't wait to get him in the game. And 19 games into the year, he only had like four innings. And it's just like, well, this guy's right. gonna move into this. You know, we moved Gavin Gidry back to the mound. Like those guys have just kind of naturally done it, and they have that good confidence and competitiveness, and want the ball, and and that's that's good when you have a lot of guys like that. And that's probably a better description of, of what we are as a team. Uh, Coach, thank you so much, man. Real quick on the way out here, um, how do you avoid against, you know, you've been through the ringer with all these great teams. How do you avoid against your team falling into the trap of looking at the standings and be like, oh, Miss 3-12, eh, you know, we can just kind of go show up. 
Yeah, it's pretty simple. They got five starters back from the national championship <laughs> team. And, uh, you know, I, I three of their conference series have been against Vanderbilt, Florida, and Arkansas. Okay. So it's, it's not, not hard to figure out. And, and I think our guys are actually pretty good about this type of thing with uh, knowing our league and, and the challenges because, I mean, we're one of the best teams in the country and we've been put to the test every single weekend in conference. So we don't, we don't expect it to be any different this weekend. Coach Jay Johnson, thank you so much, man. Uh, best of luck in Oxford, uh, as always. We just can't wait to watch this weekend, man. All right, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, Coach. You too. There he is, the man, the head man of the number one yeah. baseball team in the land. Not gonna lie, I'm I'm pretty happy that he liked the Bagwell reference. Yeah, he did. I I, th- I think I think I just got a little uh, he did a little brownie points. He did like that coach it, there. Uh, it it is always fascinating to me. And, and T, I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure Stud did it to you before. Like if he needed somebody to step up, football coach is a little bit more. Hey, hey, bud. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's time to step. But but baseball is it's so mental. Like there's a it's certainly when you're out there lonely on the island on the mound by yourself. I was just curious, hey, do you bring in a, a Blake money and say, hey, Blake, hey, you were our Friday night guy yep. a year ago. Now, Blake's been pitching much better as of late. We've seen you do it before in this uniform. We need you to do it again. We know what's in there, whatever you've got to do to get ready. Like, I'm just, I'm curious, like, if those kind of conversations. I, I mean, you know, I, I have one conversation like that that very much stands out in my head, and I was playing an awful game. This is not the famous LSU Tennessee game. This was a 2011 one where we ended up killing them. But at the beginning of the game, I was just playing awful, yeah. right? Like, could not get out of my own way. And Frank Wilson had one of those moments with me where instead of MFing me, though generally I responded well to being MF, yeah, me too. he kind of was <laughs> like, uh, you know, hey, look, man, breathe, okay? Yeah. Relax. Get out of your head. You've done it before. Just go do it. And it was like something switched. It was so visceral. And, um, yeah, it ended up it ended up being great. So, uh, it, you you can do coaching's got a, just such a weird, delicate, psychological type of deal. Um, you know, it's uh, not psychological, but is health related. Patient Plus Urgent Care. There you go. Okay. All right. Patient Plus at Cuff UC dot com. You'll see the difference mm. when you go see locations of Patient Plus, which are all throughout the city now, dude. I mean, everywhere there's a Patient Plus by you. So, life's a little unexpected moments. You're not feeling good. They got that wonderful little orange Muppet mascot that I love so much. Uh, you go to Patient Plus Urgent Care, you're immediately going to be blown away when you enter the building. Uh, the employees are great, excellent. They have the digital profile system, makes it so easy to get in, get out. Uh, it's the, like, again, it is the only place I bring me and my family, Patient Plus Urgent Care. Uh, go there to, again, patientplusuc.com. All right, we got uh, munchies. Oh, my God, I never text Chef Johnson. <laughs> um, oh, dang it, Bobby. Uh, it's okay. Hey, Chef's always here. How about we get one other drop, okay? I don't now, know. Because that was perfect. How about that no? was perfect. I'm happy for you. Like, I'm not Ooh. criticizing that drop. But yeah. if you're that good at that drop, why don't we have any others? Okay. So, Mario, I, I, you know, I host shows with other Bobbies. <laughs> and we have Hank Hill as well, you know, saying, dang it, Bobby, that's exactly what we don't want. I think that one would actually play well <laughs> for t Bob too. That's so let's see if really we can good. get that one. All right. That's exactly what we don't want. Yeah, we can add hockey's a little bit. But Oh, man, please tell me I didn't screw up Munchies on 420. Uh, only time will tell. You have to stick around <laughs> and find out. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, we're good. We're okay, good. Okay, it's okay, okay, 5, okay, OTB coming nice. up next. OTB, OT. Join the G team. I was on the edge of not getting it done here on this Thursday, but you know who always gets it done? Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. 225-888-8888. Though you can put any area code in front of that 888-8888, and then you have somebody fighting for you. Uh, And, in a way, you join the team that has your favorite athletes on it. Mason Smith. The entire women's basketball team, Coach Mulkey. I mean, the list goes on and on as the Gordfather of NIL is getting it done on the field, on the court. Go find them on social media at Get Gordon. You can find them on all social media. As T-Bob gave you that handle, you can also find them online, getgordon.com. If you're sitting at your desk right now, it's 918, probably already at work, can't pick up the phone, but you want to find out more information, the website is a great tool because you can chat with them right now live on the website. Also, check out a list of cases they can handle for you, past client results, all of that is right there online, getgordon.com, at getgordon on social media, and your area code followed by the eights.
Our listeners fire up their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. At Corval Toyota in Opelousas, you can get 3.99% financing on select 2023 models. And we also have a large selection of pre-owned inventory. So come on down to Happy Town. That's Corval Toyota in Opelousas, Happy Town, USA. For over a century, local broadcasting has evolved with the needs of the community. We move past the stigmas of opinion journalism and bring the most relevant news online, on air, and on the go. You have trusted us with your news, sports, weather, and entertainment. Trust us to keep moving with you. Text TV to 52886 and tell Congress local broadcasting is here to stay. I drove myself to the ER, had heart surgery, and drove myself home 24 hours later, feeling fine. Starting running again after the procedure, I'm getting excited thinking about it. I had no pain, nothing. I felt great. And right then and there, I was like, oh my God, I'm back. I'm back. It's just amazing. Oshner Health, long live you. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, Hanny Time, Hunt Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar, where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends, that's there for you at front-to-back boat service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front-to-back boat service. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units. Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our... Join me for Thursday's Hunt Palmer Show. Joe Healy from D1 Baseball's SEC Extra Team talking Southeastern Conference, and we'll turn our attention to the LSU football spring game. Hunt Palmer Show, one to three weekdays, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. OTB OT with Hester and T Bob on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge and 947 ESPN Alexandria. What the hell, Mario? What happened to the weed music? <laughs> uh, I get it. Yep. I get it. 420, baby. The perfect, and we have not leaned into the 420 thing all day, Chef, but it's impossible not to when we're doing a segment called Munchies here on 420. What's up, Chef? How are we feeling today? I'm good. How are y'all? Uh, doing great. Doing great. Sorry for the last minute text, man. I'm good. Um, thank you for always being available. We love you so much. Sure. No uh, <laughs> Daniel Basham, let's go ahead and start it up. Craig on the music, Mario. Dive right in. Hashtag Munchies. Um, so a lot of people talking about SpaceX, they just had a rocket that exploded. Uh, yeah. but uh, I don't know. Is everybody cheering? I don't know. I'm going to catch up on it after the show, but hashtag munchies, what foods would you take with you for space exploration? 
so first of all, I've got a buddy that's uh, in South Padre, and uh, he, he he lives there and, and gets to watch all that stuff happen oh. on a on a day to day basis. And he was just telling, I actually just texted him. And he was telling me that they're uh, they they've been cleared for a five year deal to, to launch once a month. So that's that's pretty cool. That's badass, um, dude. Wow. That's, yeah, it uh, is. I, I can't imagine living there and watching that happen on a you know like on a month to month basis. That, that's that's pretty incredible. How about this, chef? There were one when I when I checked in on the stream. There were 1.2 million people watching live on YouTube alone. Oh man, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was he he told me not too long ago that they're actually that, that he's actually building a school district there and like it's going to be a small city of, of of the employees that work for SpaceX and Makes sense. and they're building they're bu- building their own school and, and kind of miniature little town for them to to uh, sustain in. It's, it's pretty incredible, man. Ooh, it's like it's like it's like a gold rush town, but for space. It's really <laughs> right? badass. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so what, anyway. foods, what foods would you take with you for space exploration? You know, um, I, it, for some reason, like, the idea of ice cream just hit me. You know, yep. like, I, I, I see, like, these frozen globules of ice cream. And, you know, you, I, 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 you guys have had to try, like, ice, uh, spaceship ice cream before. Yes, it's like, I remember yeah. them coming yeah. around, like, in elementary school and giving yeah. that, like, dehydrated ice mm-hmm. cream and feeling so cool that yeah. I was eating what the astronauts eat. Like that, that it's like a malted ball almost, or something, or you know, like it's it's kind of strange. So I, I don't know. For me, like I want some, I want some triple cream chocolate, Dutch yeah. chocolate, you know, floating around with me while I'm up there. Yeah, nothing better to fight off the anxiety of you know the everything <laughs> outside of this tiny little spaceship trying to instantly kill you. In some delicious uh, chocolate yeah. ice cream. You know what? While your bones are depleting, you got to put some calcium back in there. Yeah, oh, yeah that's yes. true. There you, go. there you go. Yeah, you find a tie for sure. Uh, <laughs> hashtag munchies. Chef, I know you have many answers to this question. What is a dish that everyone overcomplicates? Hmm. Um, you, you know, as it's, as it's breakfast time here, I yep. think I think omelets is one of those. Yep, that, you know, really. like people, oh, gosh, it's, it's, you know, like, it really is not that difficult, but I think people get anxious, you know, mm-hmm. maybe in the morning time and, and uh, try to try to overload it as well and, and, you know, put too much fat in it. I mean, there's there's a thousand ways to screw up an omelet, and, and uh, I, I know more people that can do it than, than can't. So I think, you know, as, as I'm thinking about food and it's morning time, an omelet is going to be an easy easy uh, answer for that. But yeah, that, to their point, there's there's a thousand answers there, yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like, eggs was the first place that my brain yeah. went, Chef. So. So, yeah. so what is your, so what is your kind of, um, you know, let's, let's, let's hit the fundamentals here in your omelet. Like, like, what is your omelet of choice? Well, one, you know, like a lot of, a lot of, a lot of folks are, are, are at this, uh, sub- subscribe to this idea that you can't have brown on your eggs when you cook an omelet. It's got to be light and fluffy and, and, and pure yellow and, you know, like I actually, I actually like that caramelization of the egg on the outside when you cook it, and and have a little brown color on it. Okay. I've worked for chefs that that if you had any type of brown on the omelet, it was throw it away and start over. And that to me is a little bit ridiculous. You know what? I it it that requires a super low heat or a much lower heat and a, a lot longer time. And you know, like in the world of breakfast, people are hungry. Yeah. You know, and and I can make <laughs> I can go. make four I can make four omelets in the time. That it, it takes to make one of those other omelets, and I, 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 I um, some chefs get caught up on like whether it's a French omelet or a or an American omelet, how, how many folds it has, and mm-hmm. you know at the end of the day, I, I, I don't really get caught up on that kind of stuff. You know, like I just want my omelet. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yes. You know, and I, I think that most people are that way. Uh, um, you know, I, I cook over like a medium heat, um, and and I like butter versus oil when I'm cooking my omelet. The fattiness of it kind of sets the egg correctly. Um, I put sour cream in my eggs when I whip them, and it kind of tur- keeps them from from turning green if you accidentally overcook them. Oh. Um, so th- there are definitely some things there that, and it also adds a little bit of a, a citric acidity to to the egg that kind of makes it a little bit bite, you know. And uh, um, I, I really like some sour cream in my egg. So so I dump like a tiny little bit of milk sometimes. Should I do the sour yep. cream instead of the milk? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yep. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I like both and, those and things. Yeah. Let your eggs come to room temperature, right? Because at, at, when when you oh. put cold eggs into a hot pan, there's a there's a there's a harsh transition there. And so when you if you're forking your eggs to fluff, mm-hmm. they they're going to fluff and hold structure better when they're warm, and they're going to create air air pockets better when they're warm. So, so you, 
Go ahead. I was going to say, Chef, shouldn't we just then just store our eggs at room temperature? Because they don't actually need uh, to know, be refrigerated, do they? Some people do, but um, I, I think that, you know, like they keep pressure longer, like the yolk keeps pressure okay. longer and under refrigeration. That You know, like the fattiness of it holds structure a little bit better. Um, so it, I, I, I refrigerate my eggs um, and, and, and pull them out and let them rest at room temperature for maybe 30 minutes ahead of oh, time. Okay. Just, just to kind of, you, you know, they'll start sweating a little bit and, and uh, you, you, you'll know that they're there when they when it, they start sweating that way. Yeah, I was going to ask is like maybe because it is breakfast and obviously we got to be here early, like doing it maybe right before you go to bed, is that too long to set them out? Um, you know, I don't think it is. Uh, you know, like I just don't keep my eggs out, over, you know, for long periods yeah. of time. Um, it, 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 you know, if you set it out just, and I guess it depends on what time you go to bed too, Jake, you know, like if you go to bed yeah. at seven o'clock, if you're getting up at, at seven, mm-hmm. I don't know that I would let it go for 12 right. hours yeah. just, just be, to be protective. But, you know, if you're going to bed at 10 or 11 and, and getting up at five or six, right. I, I, it's, you know, yeah. a feasible deal. Todd Hoover says, hashtag munchies. Well, in my restaurant, we had a happy family because everyone enjoyed pranks. What pranks have employees pulled on you? Uh, gosh. You know, I worked at Fleming's for a little while back back a, a, a lifetime ago, and, and we, we kind of got into this prank uh, war for a little while. <laughs> and, you know, like we would take we would take the seasoning shaker tops and unscrew them, oh, no. uh, off, you know, like when you're seasoning your steaks no. and whatnot. And, <laughs> and so uh, I had that pulled on me once. We also tar and feathered people who quit. So, you know, they oh. would, they would they're on their last day, um, you know, like they would clock out and, and go to leave, and we'd have a, a guy at the back door with a bucket of water and two guys or two people, two chefs out the back door with buckets of flour oh, and, no. and, <laughs> and, oh and you know, wet them up good before they made the door. And, and as they run out the door away from the bucket of water, run right into the trap, and <laughs> the line's then full of flour. So we've, we, I've, we've done that before. Um, oh I, I, had, I had one chef that, uh, so we have these, you know, it's called a, it's called a sheet or a, a hotel pan, and they come in different depths. So I had a what they call a six pan. It's six of these fits in one full one full hotel pan, but it's six inches deep. And I packed that thing full of flour. I mean, packed it full of flour. So and then inverted it upside down at this guy's workstation, and then brushed all the loose flour away. So it just looked like an upside down pan on his workstation. <laughs> and when he went to come and grab it, you know, like he picked it up and and you know, moved it away from his workstation and that the flower was packed in there tight enough that it held just for a moment and then all of it collapsed and let loose. And I mean, it looked oh like a flower God. bomb worked off, went off at his workstation. It, there was flour everywhere. I would be so yeah. pissed. Yeah. Oh my God. Dude. Uh, hashtag munchies. Uh, it seems aggressive for mine, not for him, but he says, should people who put mayo on an Italian sub be hung by their thumbs? Oh man, you know the Italian side of me is saying yes, but I, I, I have a I have a little French side that enjoys mayonnaise or aioli, and so you know may, maybe if we just call it aioli, it'll be okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There it's a go. branding issue. <laughs> yes. Right, yeah. Anything. Right. Uh, hashtag yeah. munchies. What's a dish you ate one too many times and now you can't eat it? I know I certainly have one. So I I, I actually have gotten to the place where I can eat it again, but um, when I worked in Kansas City for the for this minor league b- baseball stadium, my, my sous chef um, Parker and I were were doing a, an event at uh, Kemper Arena, and I, I got I don't know what we were thinking, but he and I got into this conversation about cottage cheese. Next thing I know, we're we're betting money, and he bet me a hundred bucks that I couldn't eat five pounds of cottage oh cheese. Oh my but, god! Uh, no, no. And and I was like, I, I'm going to take your money, and so. And so at the very last second before we shook, he says, and you have to drink a quarter full milk. <laughs> oh, so, oh, my God. And so, you know, I I killed the quarter full milk. And I mean to tell you guys, I got down within three bites of finishing five pounds of cottage cheese. And I I got to the point where I was going to vomit. And and I, I was just like, I can't do this, man. I, I'm, I'm going to hate cottage cheese for the rest of my life. And I love cottage cheese. I mean, cottage cheese is great, but five, is. Pounds, of five pounds of is, anything is objectively yeah. absurd. <laughs> and no, also, dude, like, it, it, actually, it, actually, it actually, true, no, also true, not only five pounds of anything, but five pounds of, like, a cottage cheese is good, but yeah. five pounds of cottage cheese is on the higher end of yeah. the more absurd thing to eat five pounds of. Oh, yeah. I mean, For a hundred bucks. Like, shows you how times like have changed. I look like I was pregnant, and, 
there was definitely repercussions for the next <laughs> couple of days as well. Well, yeah. well and Chef, I mean, it's funny because you could tell that's a bit of a younger time because I don't know that nowadays you would think it was worth it for $100. <laughs> no, I definitely wouldn't do that for 100 bucks, man. No. <laughs> no. Uh, hashtag, mun- hashtag munchies. Um, uh, where was it? Uh, uh, oh, hashtag munchies. I saw a thing where Oreos dipped in sour cream tastes like cheesecake. Oh, you know, that makes sense, though, because you actually you, you make uh, like a cheesecake topping with, yeah. with sour cream and you and you whip sugar into it. And, and it's, it's it's a tr- kind of a traditional uh, New York style cheesecake topping. Oh, OK, um, so I, I, I could see that. Uh, hashtag munchies. What leftover are you most excited to see when you open the fridge? Oh, man. Fried chicken all day long. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll take I'll take hot wings directly to the house. And put them in the refrigerator just so they cool off. Really, I, I, I absolutely love cold fried chicken, man. It's, and you, if you ask any of my employees, they'll all they'll all tell you like I have this thing about cold food. I, I've told you all that before. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you got it, me. It's on, just, you go ahead. Sorry. It's, it's it's a curiosity, you know. Like, I, if if it tastes one way when it's hot, it tastes just slightly different in a, in a in a different way. And if it tastes good while it's cold, you know, you know, it's going to taste good when it's hot. And so. Um, I don't know. There's something special about the way you know the meat pulls from the boat bone when it's cold and it kind of tears. And I, I don't know. I, I love cold fried chicken, man. No, I mean, chef, you put me on this, and I, I, I tell like I, I, I would actually, pref- I actually prefer like cold spaghetti and meatballs now. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, there's just something about it out the fridge that is so tasty to me, and and yeah. you open my eyes to a whole new world of when you said, yeah, it's, it becomes like a different food, uh, and so you can, it, it you really can eat does. it in two different ways. Yeah. Does the breading the breading stays on the chicken, Chef? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. It gets a little soggy. It's not as crispy, right? But it, it's a little soggy. But you know, I'll give you another for instance, like cold pizza. I, cold, cold, hot pizza, I'll eat just just you know like warm, cheesy, gooey stuff. But cold pizza, I'll actually dip into into, into ketchup because oh, it's wow. it, I, it you know like I like the sweetness of the ketchup with the fattiness of the cheese, and um, I don't ever do that with hot pizza. You know, like it's. It, it's a different experience, but with cold pizza and ketchup, and it's like people are going to be judging me right now. I can feel it. But. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like I like cold pizza and ketchup. Chef Michael Johnson, that's actually a perfect way to end the 420 edition of yes, Munchies. Yes, cold pizza <laughs> and ketchup. <laughs> that feels like the most stoner answer that we've ever Just had on this mind. program. <laughs> uh, 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 chef Michael Johnson, thank you so much, man. You have an excellent day, brother. Take care, guys. Thanks, Chef. Um, cold, <laughs> cold pizza. pizza. I'm going to try it, though. I'm telling you. Um, yeah. Chef changed a lot of I can get the that. spaghetti and meatball. I, I actually, I can get. The only thing with fried chicken is. The thing I like if I do eat fried chicken, I don't eat it a ton, is like the, crisp. the crispiness. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's where I think I think what you do is you do the best of both worlds, and you eat it hot, but you get enough to where you save some, mm-hmm. and then you just try the cold later on. Yeah. Wasn't, so you get so you get a little you, you get to try both. Wasn't cold pizza an old ESPN yes, show? Yes. Yes. I'm with, not making um, it up, right? Jay Mariotti, okay. maybe. Okay. Yeah, cold pizza. It was like their old morning show. Back wow. in the day. I think that was the original first take, right? Like that show became first take. Okay. Yes, I believe so. Uh, they yeah. brought on Skip and eventually they brought on uh, Stephen A. Um, when we get back, more OTB. Keep it locked. OTB. OT. ITI College.edu. ITI College.edu. That is the website for ITI Technical College. ITI Technical College is a local family owned trade school that is celebrating 50 years of being right here in Baton Rouge and making careers happen. Okay, so if you have a job, you want a career, well, you can get it in just two years by going to ITI Technical College. And look, if you already are a graduate, then you know how it's changed your life for the better. Uh, you, They want to celebrate you, and they want you to celebrate with them. So go find them on social media. They got a ton of great events planned for this entire year. But uh, look, the real thing is if you want to change your life for the better, ITI is right there on Airline Highway. Wait for you. Stop putting it off. Act now. ITI College, I need you. And change it today because you can call them today and they can help you get on schedule, get to the finish line. That's what they're all about. 225-267-8003. T-Bob said it. Airline Highway, blown away by the campus. Always online. ITICollege.edu. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile. 
on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, it's Matt Musso. Join me Monday through Friday for your daily update on LSU baseball with Musso at the Box, presented by New Orleans Flooring. Wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google, and check out New Orleans Flooring. Two locations, Metairie and Prairieville or nolaflooring.com. Each year, Guarantee Media hosts a Radiothon to benefit Dreams Come True, the local organization that grants dreams to Louisiana kids suffering life-threatening illnesses and their families. We've interviewed these incredible kids and their stories warm our hearts. And none of it would be possible without your help. So we're asking for your support in our effort to making more dreams come true. Each year, our Dreams Come True Radiothon is powered by the Baton Rouge Clinic. Visit GuaranteeMedia.com to pledge your support today and thank you. Clash of the Cooks Jambalaya Showdown is back. Join us on Saturday, April 22nd at the Ostner Medical Complex at The Grove. We've got cooking teams of pros and joes serving up their best jambalaya and Cajun Creole dishes, all while helping raise dough for local families battling cancer. Bring the whole family for great food, live tunes, and good times. Clash of the Cooks Jambalaya Showdown presented by Ostner. Saturday, April 22nd at lunchtime. Help us paddle it forward. For tickets and more information, go to clashofthecooks.com. All right. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water. That's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends. That's there for you at Front to Back Boat Service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to Back Boat Service. Matt Moscona inviting you to join us for Thursday's AFR, presented by the Aesthetic Medicine and Anti-Aging Clinics of Louisiana. Brian Kelly meets with the media after the Tigers' final practice of spring. And we chat with Kendall Rogers. Join us 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. One zero four five ESPN Baton Rouge and the Baton Rouge Clinic bring you the Dreams Come True Radiothon. Dreams Come True is an organization designed to help grant dreams for children with life-threatening illnesses and their families. The Dreams Come True Radiothon is presented today by the Baton Rouge Men's Clinic, Patient Plus, and Louisiana Federal Land Bank. Remember, for every $5 donated, you get an entry into our raffle, and you get a chance to win an Aaron and Austin Nola autographed bat or a Justin Jefferson autographed LSU helmet. Donate today at 1045ESPN.com. OTB, OT, with Hester and T-Bob on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge and 94.7 ESPN Alexandria. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. <laughs> um, shout out Chef Johnson. Happy 420. It's a great munchie. He's very funny. Oh, I'm going great, to try. Great job. I, I normally get the kids pizza like once a week, you know, maybe like a weekend dinner. We or got something. it last night because you get home from the ball field at 1020. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have something ready to go. That's insane. Um, but um, I'm going to try some cold pizza and ketchup. Okay, let's see. There, we have a, I feel like we have a lot of topics that we had in here that we haven't gotten to yet today uh one of the ones in in t if you want to go somewhere else no no you go you go that's fine Uh, we we had an article it was nfl draft related but it was late round fines for every power five team 
And I started to look at this list, and the only reason I clicked on it initially was I wanted to see who they had for LSU. But some of the names on this list, it just tells you the NFL draft, like, we all do it. I'll do it this year. Mm -hmm. I'll overreact. I'll overreact to a pick, good, bad, indifferent, right? The entire gambit. We'll run it. But there's so much value, and it's all about development. It's about going to the right situation, yep. the right organization, like we were talking about earlier. And some of these names on this list, man, it's just fascinating. I mean, we're talking about guys that are going to end up in Canton. We're talking about guys that are, are Super Bowl champions many times over. It's just a fascinating list. And I just love some of the names on here because, again, going back to another conversation we had, man, just keep working. Yeah. Just keep grinding. So this is each school's best late-round draft pick, yeah. right? Um, I mean, one guy who jumps on the page to me, Virginia Tech, Cam Chancellor. Yeah, Cam Chancellor was a fifth-round pick in 2010 and went on to be uh, one of the key pieces behind the Legion of Boom. Is Cam Chancellor a Hall of Famer? I'm not he, sure. I mean, I don't know. He, he was all, t all pro a couple of times. I mean, yeah. so he meets some of the standards. Um, he'll be in a conversation. Like, he'll be on a list. He won't be a first ballot. But he'll be in that conversation. He I played think. quarterback and DB, quarterback and corner at Virginia Tech before eventually finding that kind of a yeah. linebacker. We role played him. We played him as, a, as a young role. fella uh, in 07. Oh, he was yeah, yeah, because he got yeah. drafted in 2010. Okay, yeah. wow. That, that that Virginia Tech team: Tyrod Taylor, Xavier DB, Brandon Flowers, Cam Chancellor. Had some really good players. They had wow. one of the uh, Glennons with the long neck, Mike. Uh, Mike's brother, I think. Uh, Sean. 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 Nice pull. Taylor. Uh, Jason Kelsey was a sixth round pick out of Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not only one of the best centers and probably the best center in the NFL right now, but also the best uh, podcast in the New Heights podcast with him and Travis Kelsey. It's awesome. It is. And we keep going down this list, and there's going to be a lot of names. That a lot of people, and obviously like Tom Brady's going to be on every single one of these lists, but Darren Sproles, yep. another great name, fourth rounder, 130th overall to San Diego. I mean, Sproles, and I'm biased here, but I think everyone would agree, he redefined what it meant to be a third down back. I mean, he was a weapon. He was a weapon in San Diego, he was in New Orleans, and he was in Philly. And also what he gave you in the return game, too. Like To me, and maybe he won't be in the conversation, but he should be as far as Hall of Famer. He produced 8,392 yards from scrimmage Jeez. with nine career return touchdowns. Jeez. Uh, that's insane. I mean, where's that rank all time? The nine career returns. It's it has to be up there. there. It has to be. Um, Iowa, George Kittle, fifth round. We heard Hartsock just talking about that a little second ago. Um, Stephon Diggs was a fifth round pick out of Maryland. Yep. I had no idea Stephon Diggs went to Maryland. I do not remember that, actually. Yep. Zach Thomas. Fifth rounder out of Texas Tech. Uh, Zach Streif, a name that Saints fans love. Seventh rounder, obviously, out of Northwestern. But uh, there is one name on here more than any, Jake, that LSU fans will love. They will, and that is uh, obviously the LSU portion of this, and that is Kyle Williams. That's right, baby. Kyle Williams was somebody I was fortunate enough to be teammates with for two seasons. He was an at and unfortunately, by the way, I had to play him in District 15A when he was at Ruston and I was at Evangel. I mean, you knew Kyle was going to be special. He was a fifth round pick, 134th overall to Buffalo. And Kyle, I mean, year after year after year, was one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. By the time he retired in 2018, he had been selected to six Pro Bowls, logged 610 career tackles, and 48 and a half sacks. All with the Buffalo Bills. Bro, 48 and a half sacks from the interior. It's got to hurt Will Kyle's heart a little bit that he didn't get in this most recent Bills era. Right? He had to just eat crap for years the, and yeah, years. Yeah, he got the very, years. very, very, yeah. very end of his career. They yeah, made I guess they made the playoffs. playoffs. Yeah, and that was a big right. deal, yeah. Right. Uh, all right, when we get back, let's wrap up with the last bench. OTB. OT. Ah! I lost my live sheet. It's okay. You can uh, be an all-star when you recover Anyhow, here, T-Bob. You're an all-star. Yeah, you should go to allstartoyotofbatteries.com. Show goes on. Buying, leasing, and renting. It doesn't really matter what you're looking to do. The full fleet's available on all of those. And you might think, well, isn't that the case everywhere? It's just not. It's not. I mean, even in leasing, like, not everything's available. You can only lease these certain vehicles, certainly in the rental department. Hey, we've got these three options. We're going to have only one SUV, only one truck, only one sedan. That's not the case. 
everything is available per day rental prices you can check out the per day rental prices and which vehicle you're looking at on their website that website all-star toyota of baton rouge.com all-star toyota baton rouge man jake just told you about it okay uh we tell you about it every single day twice a day because they support otb okay so if you want to support otb you could do that by hooking up our friends over there at all-star and they're going to hook you up with the best deal all-star toyota of baton rouge our listeners fire up their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. The most valuable player probably is the unsung hero for the entire playoffs, LaDaysha Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walker. Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. Clash of the Cooks Jambalaya Showdown is back. Join us on Saturday, April 22nd at the Oshner Medical Complex at The Grove. We've got cooking teams of pros and joes serving up their best jambalaya and Cajun Creole dishes, all while helping raise dough for local families battling cancer. Bring the whole family for great food, live tunes, and good times. Clash of the Cooks Jambalaya Showdown presented by Oshner. Saturday, April 22nd at lunchtime. Help us paddle it. Hey, Jimmy out here, Charles Handegraff for the Thursday edition of Game Time. It's live from Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar, 6 to 8 p.m. Thursday from Jolie Pearl, downtown, facing Town Square. Game Time on 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. OTB, OT, with Hester and T-Bob on 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge, and 94.7 ESPN, Alexandria. Ask the bench. Brought to you by Cole Curse Light, Busy Hard Seltzer, and Blue Moon Light Sky Citrus Sweet. Bigger day to you, 420 or May the 4th be with you? Uh, may the 4th be with you, without a doubt. Um, at, at this point, like I said, 420, like in high school, is like, oh, y'all, dude. <laughs> but like at this point, it's like, you know, every day. Yeah, I'll go um, because you do have a, a, a different skip in your step. Not that you're always not pretty chipper because you are. May the 4th, though, I can tell it means a lot to you, too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I even had a, uh, a lightsaber battle with you last year. That was really fun. I forgot on, about that. Uh, on May the 4th. No, um, I mean, to be clear, it has been great vibes in the studio all day today, but I think what may, most has me 
So Chipper Day is the excellent um, document execution today. It just it just makes me so freaking happy to see everybody hopping in there and adding adding everything to it. It's awesome. Yeah, you know, I'm a little bit of a meathead, and it took me a little bit, and you know, I write things hey, down. I don't care. You know, what? it's all good. We'll get. You know? Hey, we'll get there. We're here. Hey, we're, we're, we are look, here. And it's awesome. In. We're two years in. It's not that. Long. We are here. <laughs> it's hey. Not that long. So, um, hashtag ask the bench. Uh, oh God, we didn't get to this. A's are moving to Vegas. Thoughts? Uh, the yeah, possum. You, Mario. I mean, it was one yeah, step too far. Yeah, Final guys. Draw. I mean, we y'all y'all said it the other day. Like a possum climbing into your broadcast booth. It is. It's just a step too far. They have been habitual line steppers, and yep. now they just they've gone so far the other way. You can't come back. Oakland. This is also on you. Everybody in that organization. Your stadium's a dump. You got 3,000 fans. You're honoring a world champion team, and you had 3,000 fans show up? It's early in the season, and the A's are actually playing above what people thought they would be. Are they still? I thought they were like 3 and 13. I mean, well, they're, but they're like, they're like, Look, I, don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm saying they're competitive in these games. They've actually dropped a lot of games late, but like, it, you, yeah, you don't need a team. You just don't. Oakland, you don't deserve a team. Basketball, baseball, football. Hell, whatever sport you want to throw out there, hockey, rugby, water polo, you don't deserve anything, Oakland, okay? At all. Um. All right, could you do the next one while I look for something real quick? Uh, let's see. <laughs> what is the silliest thing you have ever done while stoned? I don't know that anybody wants to answer that question on here. Um. Hmm. Oh my God! I really need this DraftKings copy to pull up so I can read. Ask the disclaimer. bench. This is this is gonna my best Cajun restaurant to lose my not in mind. Louisiana. I don't know. Mm, I, did, so, I so just don't define, know. I mean, could we just say seafood restaurant? Because I mean, no, I don't, I, I don't know if I've been to a something kid. where you sit down. It's jambalaya. It's etouffee. It's I don't know, but I, I'll tell you this: the seafood restaurant Oyster House in Alabama. It's in Gulf Shores and in Mobile. Really good red beans and rice as a side, sneaky side okay. there. All right, I'm going to go Gumbo Bros. They got one in Brooklyn, one in Nashville. It's from LSU students. It is fantastic. That's my answer there. Um, look, uh, DraftKings right now. If you sign up with the promo code Baton Rouge, they have the great five dollar pregame money line bet deal. Or if you win, you get 150 dollars in free bets. Uh, and uh, for all customers, okay, uh, ten dollars same game parlays, no sweat, so you can get that money back up to ten dollars if if you lose. More OTB tomorrow. OTB OT.